come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show. Extra tonight. <laughs> I well, I mean, a- I should, right? Because this is. I just took is- a breath for you. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> this is the year end wrap up episode of the Saturday tradition. Night Freak Show. I know. Yeah. Many, many years spent yeah. drunk talking about movies of the year. And I love it yeah. every single time. It is my favorite <laughs> episode of the year. Yeah. It's been how many years since our first one? We did it in 2016. Right. So, so, it's so number six. It's six years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Our yeah. first one was on the fly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, it was just Sean, Colin, and I. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, we were like, yeah, we should do a we should do a best of episode. And we had I just recorded an Something. episode, <laughs> and we decided to record that. So we actually recorded for like six hours that night. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, I yeah. believe it. That's and, and the movie, whatever. Yeah, yeah, wow. like that. yeah, yeah. So we like all sat around looking at lists the list of movies that came out and tried to put together a list real quick. And our it, our episode was basically like this. Well, I like The Witch. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, you know what was really good? Civil War. Oh, I know. That's one of mine, too. Like, that's, that oh, was the okay. whole thing. Right. Like, it was just... <laughs> it's much more sophisticated now. Yeah. It was yeah. like us yeah. picking the same movies. And, like, <laughs> and the next year was a three-hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Expanded the expanded very quickly. The next year, we think, found our strike. Yeah, that was where we're... we're so we're each going to... If this is your first rodeo, then... Yeah. So we, we cover a lot of movies on this show, but we also watch a lot of movies, you know. And so this is kind of... We're just going over our preferential favorites of movies that we saw this year. We're going to yeah. give you each five of our favorites and one of the worst. And this is, and this is like the time that we can talk about movies that we wouldn't normally be able to talk about on the freak yeah. show. Well, and, with a little caveat, yeah. but we'll tell you about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, this is what it's like before we record an episode every week before we record, we have a yeah. warm up a little bit by talking about what we watched that you week. Guys watch yeah. Would you watch this week? Yeah. So this is what it's like. This is some inside baseball for you. What it's like to just, be around us yeah and on a normal day like this is what our group chat's like this is what our conversations Mm -hmm. are like that's why we have so much fun because our listeners get to like listen into what it we're just like off the cuff basically yeah this i love this one yeah my favorite yeah all right well we've prepared our lists sure have and then i study for this like it's a final (laughs) i I was watching movies right up until i came here yeah so there are varying uh preparations for yeah like i was cramming as far as like movies go like Mm -hmm. the the month leading up to this i was watching multiple movies a week Mm -hmm. but then like today i realized that i never actually made my list (laughs) and i was like fuck so i was literally like laying in my bed for like two hours just like scratching off in the rewriting names Mm -hmm. on this list and i I didn't take any notes, so we'll see how this, yeah, goes. Well, we'll see how this kind of gonna, goes. Well, I mean, I know what the, the five are, I guess, that yeah. I picked. Right, uh, yeah. 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 And I've been kind of thinking about that for, you know, most of the year. When you yeah, watch yes. something, you're like... But did your, did your five, like... Because the two hours I spent today, like, my five kept changing over and over again. And finally, I was just like, you know what? They're going to keep changing. Yep. Do you ever have, like, like, kind of a vague idea of what your list is? And then you see one, and it jumps almost all the way up to the top. Just, like, it just bypasses so many other movies. Yeah. That happened to me a few times. Yeah. So. There is a couple that it's, like, those are at number one and two. Mm-hmm. Like, no move in it. But mm-hmm. then the other ones are, like, interchangeable. Mm-hmm. And we should also say, like, obviously, we haven't seen every movie that's out there, so it's possible no, that you've seen something. I did not try this year. I did not best. see a lot. Yeah, I actually did pretty good this month. Yeah, I did. I, I, did. I bet Holly did better than I did. A lot of stuff. I bet I did. Yeah, I was kind of yeah. following my own interests, so there's a lot Same. of stuff. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. that I missed that you know just didn't interest me. So it may be yeah. the greatest thing. In I my notes, I even it. like like when I was trying to figure out my list, I even wrote down like my own little like subcategories. Uh, mm-hmm. okay. It was like right, ones yeah. that like wouldn't make it to my list. It was like most surprising Chip and Dale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, we, we do sometimes if we have time at the end, do quick honorable mention picks. So yeah, I, I, I had a lot of like middling stuff this year yeah. that I feel like would fall under an honorable and I know mention. That, I know that you and I have one that would be on our list possibly, yeah. but we want to do an episode on it. Yeah. So Holly and I watched yeah. a movie uh, and oh, we, were, yeah. we were talking back and forth when we were watching this movie that we both knew nothing about and we both hit the same kind of time stamp and said oh, okay we need to do an episode yeah. on this. so stay tuned for that yeah because we were basically watching it at the same time yep. yeah mm-hmm. it's coming soon yep all right well i'm i'm very curious to hear because we don't know what we're gonna no, that's the other thing no this is all, we keep it secrets from yes. each other we don't know 
I think that's what's most fun about this because usually when we do an episode, by the end of it, when we do our wrap up, I can usually tell where everyone's at. Yeah. Usually, but this, like, we have no idea. <laughs> yeah, we have no yeah. idea. And when you got a wild card like Sean, you know his list this year might be Zola five times. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then and then I don't know what Jurassic. I, World he's probably worst, making yeah. that face because his number one is Chip and Dale. <laughs> yeah. You know. I mean, in a world where Chip and Dale could have made this list. Yeah. Yeah. Anything's possible. Really? Like. Mm. It was delightful. I'm just saying. Yeah, All right. Well. All right. It was weird year yeah well i guess okay we're gonna get started so this is our top five uh movies uh starting with number five and sean won the uh <laughs> he won the tournament <laughs> the I tournament did. at the beginning he won so. kumite i have to blow my nose <laughs> sean was the kumite champion for yep. 2022 that was my drum roll yep. there you go <laughs> the suspense is building all right sean what was the fifth best movie of the year the fifth best movie of the year was a tie you always you love to do a tie. I love to do you a number love five. Love to do a tie. You guys made me go first. Oh, this is what you get. Well, fuck, I might. <laughs> might take advantage yeah, of this yeah, too. Yeah, changes so we'll everything, see. doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's my thought. All right, number five is a tie between first off the movie Watcher. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. okay. Yeah. Which yes. uh, starring uh, Micah uh, Monroe. Micah Monroe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, directed by just looking it up. Chloe Okuno. Chloe, oh, Chloe yeah. Okuno. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Who is currently working on the Let the Right One in TV yep. series. And was that her? Was was Watcher her first movie? No, no, I don't she think so. Did, I think she had done something else. I think she had a movie called Slut. She did Slut, yes. Yep, and she did a, yes. That was her first. Um, wait, did she? Yeah. yeah. Yes, that was. It was a short. She did short, short, short. Another one for VHS ninety four. She directed that. Um, and then Watcher was mm-hmm. yeah. It looks like her first actual big feature. Did she do Hail Ratma in VHS uh, ninety four? Was that hers? Ooh. Who did? Okay, well, anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, know. Watcher, Watcher is one of the Thai movies. Okay, yes. I've seen this one. Have yep. we all seen yep, this? Yep, we've one? all seen it. Yes, yes. Okay, good. Um, it's it was uh, one of my favorite movies this year. Um, it was a very, it's a very cool um, thriller mystery, which, and it, but it does. The reason it's tied, I should say, is it uses some of the some cliches to kind of set up where it's going in the movie mm-hmm. and and sort of some of the obstacles the character uh, Michael Monroe comes across like the boyfriend who's doesn't believe her when she says Carl something's Gleusman? going on. Yeah. The glue is loose in this movie. Yeah, oh, he geez. was in um <laughs> he was in the Gaspar No No he, uh the 3D Love 3D. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And he was in the Neon Demon. He's in weird he movies, yeah. 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 Um so that shares a similarity with my other movie in this one but this is a very i mean you've if you've seen anything about the movie it gets called hitchcock in very well mm-hmm. or very much in yeah. this but it is it is a very slow burn um a thriller uh it's done quite well it's where, where did it take place budapest, Romania. budapest. Mm-hmm. yeah or, yeah um and it's a very like the cinematography is very uh dour and it feels very like european in that regard mm-hmm. um it's very well acted um it's it's a it's a good movie. It's down lower on my list because of the ending of the movie. Um, That's fair. I mm-hmm. won't spoil it. Mm-hmm. I thought they could have committed to an ending that they didn't. Yeah. But I'll agree with that. I but, thought the same thing. I thought the ending was like it's like it, if if it would have committed to where it was going, yeah, that I, was a very seventies movie. Yes. And you know the other thing, like everybody says Hitchcockian. But that's because they've forgotten Roman Polanski. Yeah. It feels there's like a yeah, very yeah. Polanski vibe. To that's it. true. So, there really yes. is. And the, you know that's, that for, feels more correct. And for those of you who haven't seen it, so it's Michael Monroe's an American girl who uh, moves to Budapest because her boyfriend gets a job there. And then in this new apartment where she doesn't speak the language, she doesn't know anybody, um, so she kind of feels isolated. She looks out the window, and there's a guy uh, in a the silhouette. window, a silhouette in, across the street. And he's just always, every time she looks over there, he's watching. And one night, she waves. And that really, and that's the start of where this <laughs> yeah. goes. And he you know, waves back. Curtains could have solved this movie. Yeah. Well, about, about, <laughs> you know, yeah. about a quor- movie curtains. About yeah. a quarter of the way through, they get curtains. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was, so that's one of them. The other one is Smile. Mm-hmm. Is the second mm-hmm. half of that, mm-hmm. um, because and also this. Has I know to do, why you picked this one. I well, it's the ending. Like it's. I was gonna say the cat death, but well, yeah. oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a cat death in this it's movie. That was one of the worst disturbing. cat deaths I've ever seen it's in a movie. Fucking terrible. No, it goes on for uh, so long, and 
damn it, I have to remove it's this from awful. the list to not like, <laughs> propagate this it, it, <laughs> this reputation I have. Yeah. No, one of the worst cat deaths. Um, but Smile was another one that uses a lot of the, um, cliches about a, a woman going through something that nobody else around her believes mm -hmm. uh, because they think so it's ridiculous. So there's a theme in your Tide Picks. In the Tide Picks, yes. I yeah. think there's a lot of movies like that this year. There are a I lot. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did, I was going to say, did Antlers come out this year? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. But a Smile was a movie that... Um, it does use those cliches, but also had a lot of like great moments in it that I couldn't kind of believe. Were, have we all seen it? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. That we kind of couldn't all believe. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Sorry, listener. Um, like there's certain moments, like when she goes into the hospital to uh, stab the, the one patient she has and everything. I was right. kind of shocked by that moment. Um, uh, and obviously the ending of this movie. Yeah. Creep factor up to 10. Huge. Like, yeah. The, the music, the sound effects. Of it, um, the reveal itself <laughs> had my jaw on the floor a little bit because mm -hmm. that's that's a cool reveal. Yeah, um, and just the very ending of it, which is it's a downer, but that's kind of where you're like, that's where you're hoping it's going. Yeah, if you like these kind of movies, and so it's a very chilling ending. But uh, yeah, those are my. Sozie yeah. Bacon is a good face for horror. She does because she's got mm -hmm. a very expressive, unique looking mm -hmm. face. You also feel like you want to protect her a little bit because she's like a, 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 a what you call it? Uh, she just so she looks. Like Small. elvish almost. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. she has very like elvish features. And I don't know, she, she's she like a little innocent. Yeah. She's yeah. like a little pixie. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, like you could yeah. break her easily and yeah. it's like, oh no, I don't want anything to happen to her. Right. I thought she was really good. She was really she good. Was. She was yeah. really good. She was. The smile, really? Just the smile. Everyone smiles in this movie. Like smiles are terrifying. <laughs> what was the one movie that tried to do this before? It follows. No, truth or wasn't it truth or dare or something like oh, that? Oh, that had the weird smile yeah. that would pop on their face. Yeah, yeah that was See, I was interested in that movie because because of the smiles. This movie pulls it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're assuming that most of you are aware of this one, but yeah, it's basically, it's The Ring, or It Follows, where a woman who's a psychologist starts seeing patients smiling at her, and yes. it turns out that it's like a communicable uh, like haunting or something mm -hmm. like yeah. that. Basically, which so is like, the reasons I didn't want to see it right off the bat, because I'm like, oh, this feels yeah, like, like it's I've doing a lot movie. of... Yeah. Well, but that's the thing that I liked about, like... Just kind of, there was a there was a a trailer which was more of a teaser than anything at the front of Top Gun Maverick this year, and that freaked everybody in the was, theater yes. out. It was a perfect trailer. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> and you're like, what is this? It and was then, like thirty seconds long. But it this was movie was it was made. I think uh, you know, like Paramount is making. Uh, most studios are doing this. They're making a bunch of stuff, and then they're determining whether or not it should go to their uh, you know streaming mm -hmm. service. Yes. Or if it's going to go to theaters. So this one cleared a hurdle somewhere to make it to theaters because I think test audiences probably said, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and I guess when I was watching, I'm like, it's it's the setup and the story is not reinventing the wheel. No. Right. Okay. But Agreed. the craft mm -hmm. and the writing is like the writer the writer has seen these movies, knows where your head is at having seen them and is anticipating that mm -hmm. and changing the structure of the plot. Yes. You know, or the happenstance, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. So, I mean, it kept me engaged. I'm like, this is a, a very good version of yes. that Absolutely. type of- Very good yeah. version of things we already know exactly. are still yeah. good versions of yeah. it. And so- But yes. hey, at least this is like an original story and not like an existing property, you know? So like, it might be a story you've heard before, thing. but it's original. It's, it's not based on something, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. You got that. And like I said, the reveal <laughs> at the end and everything. Yeah. It, yeah. That's what, I mean, uh, it, that's what should sell you on this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. So the tie is Watcher. Uh, Watcher. And Watcher uh, is, I think, it was the first time I ever saw the Shutter logo on front of a oh, movie in, in, in the theaters. theater. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that's maybe, is that the only place you can see it, or is it on VOD now? But it was it's, on the Shutter. It's on, um, it's on Shutter. I think it's, uh, yeah, Shutter. But, I think it's yeah. on VOD um, somewhere. They, I could be wrong. Yeah, because they don't hold on to their stuff like yeah. Netflix does. You mm. can still see it elsewhere after a period of time. <laughs> so, okay, uh, that's a tie for Sean Michaela. Number five. Number five. My number five is The Banshees of Inishirin, ah. um by Martin McDonough, who is uh, Seven Psychopaths in Bruges. Um, what was the other one? There's another one in there. Yeah. Oh, uh, three Billboards. Yep. Three Billboards. Yeah, it was on my list. Yeah. Like, Which was four on my years list. Ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a great um, one. So 
this movie is as bleak as it is hilarious. Like it had me laughing a lot harder than I thought I was going to. I didn't expect this to actually be like a legit comedy, but it is. But man, it's dark Barry as fuck. Cogan. What's it about? It's, it is about two friends living on this island off the coast of Ireland. Mm -hmm. And one day, Brendan Gleeson just decides he doesn't want to be friends with Colin Farrell anymore. And it kind of unravels the whole town. Mm -hmm. And right, it just Because Colin escalates. Farrell has to figure out his existence without his mm -hmm. lifelong friend. Yeah. And he doesn't, yeah. and uh, it comes throughout the movie that some people see him as a little dull, is the word. Yeah. And so he yeah. asks that question, like, you, am I dull? Yeah, this movie's mean spirited as fuck. It's very like, mean. It's like, it, the it is, but it's also like got that level of truth to it, is what can hurt. Yeah, that's and that's why the you thing, see like, it hurts the character. That's the problem with, well, that's the, the kind of the crux of the movie is that like, Colin Farrell searching for what he did wrong or what reason it could be. Maybe he's just depressed. He comes up with all these narratives to mm -hmm. kind of get himself through this grief, but like it, it just hurts that much more when Brendan Gleeson's just like, I'm going to die soon and I can't waste my time with you anymore. Like mm -hmm. that's fucking brutal to say to it's somebody. It's not even like he's he got a fatal disease. No, he's no, just no. Like, he's I mean, just like life is short. Yeah. yeah. And you're yeah. wasting my time because you're dull and you have yeah. nothing interesting to say. And like, those are such mean things to fucking say to somebody. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, and that, I, those are the scenes that were just cutting. And I was like, wow, I thought, it would like the physical stuff that happens in this movie is like upsetting. But to me, like the more cutting stuff is just the bluntness of like, I just don't like you cause you're boring. Like mm -hmm. yeah. you can't rationalize that. You can't like that mm -hmm. is personal and that's hurtful. And like, man, I don't know. Like this movie just kind of hit me harder than I thought it was going to when I was watching it. I was like, this is, a little too real. Yeah. yeah and, there's you know? a, and there's a good split between the physical pain, which doesn't seem to hurt anybody in the right. movie, versus the verbal psychological pain, which digs at these characters right. throughout this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So there's a good back and forth between that. Right. Well, also, the humor comes from those yeah. moments. The humorous right. moments. Oh, my God. Because, like, Colin those Farrell's character. Those thuds on the door are loud, considering what's being. Thrown. Yes. <laughs> really? the, but, but, like, Colin Farrell's character is so dopey. He's like Homer Simpson, basically. Like, he's so dopey and just, like, not. But bright. he's, like, innocent about it. Yeah, and he means well. Like, it, and, like, he's, that's why he yeah. just can't wrap his head around what's happening. And, like, the transformation that he goes through is yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. And the, but uh, then the guy's like, you're actually more interesting now. That you, yeah. You know, they, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're, you're losing your grip right yeah, <laughs> yeah and, i and almost the, like him again yes <laughs> and, and like that kind of stuff had me laughing like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff where it's mm -hmm. you're in a really dark moment and then they flip it on you by making a joke out yeah. of it you're like oh thank god i couldn't take it if it kept going in that direction right. you know and but it also shows like because you can have those same thoughts at the same time yeah. like, i really don't want to be his friend but i kind of like him again now right like it shows that yeah. real kind of thing and the, emotions and brain the goes movie through. has so many layers because as all of this is happening it's during the irish civil war yeah yeah and 1923 the, and the entire movie is an allegory for and the they civil can war. hear the bombs going yeah. off on and the mainland and they're talking yeah, it, about it yeah you know the moments when he's like i you know i kind of like you now but i still hate you like it's all about like what war does to people right mm. and it's just whether it's, it's big beautiful or small it is beautiful. like like the entire movie like families are literally torn apart mm -hmm. friends turn on each other there's loss of innocent like the entire movie is an allegory for the civil war and yeah. it's just it's beautiful and heartbreaking mm -hmm. but mm. hilarious at the same time and yeah. great like landscape porn of ireland it's oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful beautiful movie. Movie. yeah it's like, beautiful like these places yeah. exist oh, yeah shit. and um but i love i knew i was already really loving the movie but what the moment i was like this is going in my top five is when Brendan Gleeson is in is in the confession and uh, the, the the priest is being really nosy. He's like, so I heard you assaulted a that police officer. That shit made me laugh. <laughs> he no, says, I heard you. The... And he said, well, if punching a cop is wrong, we might as well pack up and go home now. And I was like, fuck <laughs> yeah, I'm sold on this movie. There's a lot, a uh, lot of fun stuff. And the, yeah. the bread yeah. van joke that the bread van knocked joke me out. Hilarious. I could not that I you could tell where it was going, but it was still so funny in the way it was delivered and like. <laughs> But it, like I said, if you examine any of this movie on, under a microscope at all, it's so fucking dark. You just can't yeah. peel it back because it gets too dark. You got to stay on the surface with the humor. But the tone but, is like relatively, I don't know. I mean, it's not light. The characters. Yeah. Maybe just by their inherent Irishness. Right. That's what Seem, it is. This is right. the most Irish movie ever. Buoyant, you know, yeah. even though it's like, yeah. oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Some of the stuff that's going on here. Right. It's it's interesting. Holly would say, you know, that it, it was uh, an allegory for the Civil War. Mm -hmm. I guess I took it as, um, you know, it's like it is kind of going after that. Like, you know, if, if you're a, an unattached person of a certain age, it's like, you know, you get this kind of like. Am, are all we doing really amusing crisis, ourselves yeah. until we die? I mean, it's yeah. just, yeah. you know, and you, he's just choosing to go like, 
No, I'm done with that. I'm actually going to try and leave a legacy. You right. Know, and that's what I'm going to focus on. for. Even the if it of. is a not quite great fiddle playing yeah, legacy. But <laughs> what cracked me up is it took him like a week, it seemed like, to fulfill his yeah. legacy. It's like, so <laughs> right. you threw away that whole friendship, but you couldn't just take a week yeah. off from your friend. Yeah, right. Like the, yeah. Yeah. But the whole, you know, the whole thing is like he's determined to leave his legacy while at the same time he's completely destroying any chance he has of a legacy. And again, it's the same. Which yeah, is, which it's, is what Colin Farrell's trying to say to him. It's right, the, like, but it, confronts him at but that, that point. It's the same thing about war. Right, you, right. You stand for your purpose, right. and the entire thing is being brought down by war, and it's right. just not <laughs> making any difference. You know, I, I find Colin Farrell's career to be so interesting because mm-hmm. yeah. he has these like handsome leading man looks. Oh yeah. In the early two thousands, it was like he's unhirable. He's the Robert Downey Jr. second coming. He's a disaster on set. He's a drug addict. Somehow gets past all that. Comes out the other side being like this really well-respected actor that does all these weird independent genre films. Yeah. And we'll but do like, like, we'll do like four films a year. It was the bosses movie, four bosses or whatever. Horrible bosses. Or horrible bosses. Yeah. I mean, so he's in stuff like that. Well, he's got too, right. like, and everything. Right. Well, yeah. he did this and Batman <laughs> okay. yeah, in right. the same yeah. year. Penguin. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he just, he's all over the board, but it's always interesting. Mm-hmm. And I, I always look forward to what he's doing. Yep. You know, I like so. those guys. Cause those are like, he's in like a class of actor, yeah. right? He's not in the movie star class. He's in the actor class. Oh yeah. It's like he could be a movie star, or he was, or he is, you know. Yeah. But yeah. also, I think he can go and. But that, I think that's what's great. He can go and do all those things. He right. can hop up and be like, "Do a big movie," and then I'm going to come down and do this. Mm. Right. Then I'm going to go work for my friend again. And yeah, I love yeah. it. I love He's it. Good. So yeah, Banshees of Inish Sheeran is my number five. Colin, what's your number five? Well, I guess both Watcher and um, uh, Smile were on my list, but I think I'm going to go with number five was the movie X, um, nice. Ty West movie. Mm. Um, so that one's about a, uh, it's like a 1970s thing. And I don't think like, I think Ty West actually, a lot of people try to do like this seventies kind of, uh, pastiche a lot. Like Mm -hmm. I keep thinking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies whenever they try to do it and they miss it so horribly, you know, stranger things to me is not nail in the eighties, but Ty West actually does kind of capture the zeitgeist of, not maybe the zeitgeist, the, the, the atmosphere. It's like appropriately grimy, you know, it's, it's the right level of grime. Yeah. it seems like his stuff is either more studied, more researched, or like, you know, I'm not saying it's completely authentic, but... Um, but it's closer. Yeah. And it's about this group of... Um, uh, I mean, I guess they're going to make a porno movie because they're entrepreneurs, basically, in the 70s. Yes. Young kids are all like, okay, we're going to do this because it's going to make us money. And they go out to this farm where they have uh, entered an agreement to rent the barn. But I don't think the two old folks who uh, run the place know exactly what the uh, the kids are up to. Right. And murderous shenanigans ensue. Um, this movie surprised me mm-hmm. because of the casting. Yeah, the casting was big, but in a weird way. Very well, random. Yeah, because Jenna Ortega was in. Well, I mean, like obviously, right? Kid Cudi. That's Jen, so yeah. Jenna Ortega is in the Scream yeah, Queen Ortega. of 2022. Yeah, yep. because mm-hmm. before she. Be, well, I mean, because of that and Scream and, and then, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, Brittany Snow is yeah. in this movie in yeah. a nude role. Yep. Yep. But it was, I guess, Mia Goth that mm-hmm. surprised oh, me yeah. most. And when you're talking about like people with a face for. Being in horror movies. Yep, she's got one. I mean, I remember I saw her in, um, I think the first time I ever noticed her was Cure for Wellness. And then she was in Suspiria. Mm -hmm. And then she was in, the. you know, I mean, she's done other stuff, but then she's in this. And then I guess one of the surprises um, was it got to the end credits. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know. The, that person was <laughs> what you right. I mean, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. holy yeah. cow. And then, then at the end, when I saw it in the theater, there was a commercial at the end of there was a trailer for Pearl mm. at nice. the end of the movie. And I'm like, wait, what the hell? Right. And, like we shot, you know, a prequel <laughs> and it's coming yeah. out in, f- yeah. in a couple months and you're like, what the fuck is going on yeah, here? That's how you do horror movies. Right. I may not <laughs> have the, the utmost um, appreciation for X. I thought it was a, a little too familiar. But I like the way they're producing the movies and marketing them yeah. in yeah. this way. I just wish Maxine it, it would have been out like Which is the right third after one. Pearl. But now, yeah, yeah, but they're doing is that. Maxine, be- a sequel to X. To X. Okay, yes. now that's the one I want to see. That's the one I'm more interested in. in yes. the yeah. 80s. Yes, yeah. I'm right. more interested in that one because Pearl takes place in the in the 1930s. Got yeah. yeah, early. I just watched that It'll one. Be like Dustin yeah. too. Yeah. And I didn't like that one as much, but I mean, it's that a, one takes, Faces for Horror is the yeah. last shot of, of Pearl. Right. <laughs> like, oh my 
Like, like this girl's going all the way because she like I think Mia Goth and Ty West like wrote yeah Pearl together. They were on COVID lockdown yep. in New Zealand or wherever mm-hmm. they shot the thing, and so it seems Pearl seems more like a movie where the actress is writing her moments. Yes. Yeah. The, the problem with Pearl is it takes too long to become a horror movie. It's yeah. a drama for a long time. Yeah. For like two out of three acts. Yeah, and <laughs> I think it only really works if you have seen X and uh, kind yeah, of sure. you know, see the foreshadowing and yeah. everything that's yeah, being laid Yeah, but I wasn't there. that interested in the old skeleton lady murdering people. Yeah, I didn't really think go... she needed an origin no, story, but, but, but it again, is you do it watch. for me a goth. Yeah. Like, yeah. that yeah. is the point of doing yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, right. and then she'll be in the new one. But um, yeah, I guess the thing that it just, it, it was a movie that at the time that it came out, you know, I just, the experience I had watching it was, it kept surprising me. And that's, I suppose, what, why I would recommend it. Britney the, Snow's death was awesome. Yeah, a lot of them were surprisingly. Oh yeah, brutal. I remember. I, died. I, remember. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spoil That's, it. It was a good, good it's setup, good, and then yeah. good execution yeah. later on in the movie. Yeah. yeah, it was just I thought it was a well done movie, and you know, it's like that guy. I think this was an A twenty Ty West. This is an A twenty four movie. Mm-hmm. Is it his first for A twenty four? Because he his movies were all with Larry okay. Fessenden's Glass Eye Picks or whatever. And he was doing, you know, House of the Devil and uh, um, The Innkeepers is a great, mm-hmm. you know, um, I've seen like Trigger Man. And I saw his first movie, The Roost, which was the real indie movie. Um, and then he, he did that Western with um, John Travolta, which I really didn't care for uh, in the Valley of Ella. I have not no, seen that. No, that was the Tommy Lee Jones movie. Valley of, of Violence, Violence or something like Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something like that, yeah. Didn't Where's really care for that one, but now he's, Where? you know, this one was a major theatrical release so um that means he's got some life still mm-hmm. left in his career i hope i forgot to bring it back colin i'm so sorry <laughs> anyway, bring it back. next I'll bring week it back. sean i watched week, it i'll bring it back. back okay all right holly what's your number five my number five um a lot of the movies that i watched this year that i were putting on my list i was putting on my list is because um it was a rough year and I liked movies that were making me feel good yes that were making me feel entertained and happy and all that fun stuff. So my number five is Bullet Train. <laughs> oh, see, now that looked fun. Mm-hmm. It's a fun fucking movie. That it's a fun. David Leach movie, so it's very, like, um, it's very Deadpool. It's very... You, you know, did Deadpool 1 or Deadpool 2? or Deadpool 2, okay. I think. Um, yeah. I believe he's so. one of the um, John Wick guys. He's the John yeah. Wick guy, yeah. Okay, yeah. He did the first, first one and for- second one. I can't say I know he did the first one. Yeah, okay. uh, second one. And then Deadpool 2. <laughs> I saw a Bullet Train also. Did you? Yep. Did you have fun with it? Yeah, I mean it was an entertaining. Right. Yeah, okay, it's entertaining, but, and it's got a cast to that. Yeah, but that's part of the appeal the, of it, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, just yeah. everybody who's in there. Just yeah. seems like I don't know. Having, do like, people fun. see Aaron Taylor Johnson and think I gotta go see that? Apparently, people see no, him and think Bond. You know? Yeah, no, yeah. but yeah. That, I, you know. I can't. I refuse to believe that he. There is no one that is less <laughs> Bond. Doesn't feel Bond than Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah. yeah, no, just no. Um, but yeah, Bullet Train is just a fun movie. It's funny. It's action packed from start to finish. Um, it's it's witty. It's quippy. Um, the fight scenes are good. I think the choreography is pretty good. Um, I would hope so. Yeah, well, that's it's, a lot of it because it's, it's like it's slow a lot motion. of choreography. It felt did it feel to you like um, like a um, like a Japanese cartoon anime? Sometimes it, it looks. Yeah, it looked like it's colored like one. It's like very the cinematography colorful. Feels like that. It's it, they definitely take advantage of like the Japanese ness. Sure, of- in the, <laughs> just the kinetic action. I guess maybe yeah. that's where I was like, this is very like it anime like an inspired Asian action movie that happens to have American actors in it. Uh, it, no, because I don't know. It didn't. I have never seen uh, like a Japanese action film that feels like this. Okay. But I've seen Japanese cartoons uh. that have like this kinetic motion mm-hmm. and stuff like that and style. Of no, I agree with you. Like, and I'm not like a big anime person. So that style doesn't usually appeal to me. Um, but it works in this. It's just, it's a fun movie. It's a colorful movie. Um, you're not going to get bored with it at all. It, it's from start to finish. You're just going to have fun with it. And to me, that was like my goal with movies this year is I wanted escapism. I wanted to have fun with it. Um, so yeah, bullet train, it, it does it. It just kind of, lifts you up because brad pitt's character is just delightful he's kind of going through like an existential crisis a little bit where he isn't he a hitman who's he's like i'm hit, not doing it anymore he's a hitman who's like i'm not doing it anymore he's getting into yoga and he's like very getting into like zen kind of and it's just funny it's it's very <laughs> funny he's very um 
he's almost innocent about it. Like even though he's a hitman, sure, it's kind, it's just, it's cute. It's really funny. It's yeah, it's a, it's a sweet character in a like a very violent action movie, and it's really fun. Um, yeah. His code name is Ladybug. Ladybug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? There's got to he- be a reason for it. Because ladybugs are lucky. Yeah. And he's and he's unlucky. He has to retrieve a briefcase. Yeah. But it turns out like there's a bunch of other people on this train that want that briefcase. Yeah, so, so it's yeah. like it's yeah, it's like the battle of the hitmen yeah. trying to get this case. Oh, so it's and like uh whatchamacallit? Um the Carnahan movie. Smoke and aces. Smoke and aces. aces. Yeah. It's it's kind of okay, smoke and aces fun. feel. Not, yeah, if not uh, being that far apart, then maybe just the fun level of it. Yeah, and I got like a got kind of like a Steven Soderbergh feel in some of it too, like kind of Ocean's <laughs> Um Yeah, it's just a fun movie. I like a lot. Like it does have a big cast. Um, like obviously Brad Pitt's the main guy. Um, Sandra Bullock's in it. Like it's just it's a fun movie. Um, yeah, good escapism. I highly recommend it just for a good time. Bullet Train's my number five. All right. We'll Very continue good. on the run of fun movies with my number four, <laughs> which is dun, 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 Weird. The Weird Al Yankovic story. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, what a fun movie. So um, what the, well, first of all, I like, forgot that came out. Yeah, where know. where did it come? Because it went out? to the Roku channel. Oh, that's that's why. it. Oh, okay, is but it the Roku available channel elsewhere? comes on every Roku ever. Right. Yeah, but I don't have Roku. You could probably, I think the Roku channel the Roku should be oh, an app you yeah. can get on. I think okay. so. I would hope so. Isn't this Roku down here? No, it's Fire TV. Oh, oh you can probably find it. The Roku channel is, I'm going to say, <laughs> on there. They have no reason to keep it from people. It's <laughs> the Roku channel. It feels like, like, I'll be sharing that shit, no problem. It feels like I heard about this movie, and then the next day it was out. Roku, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Roku's just like, you don't have to pay. Just watch yeah, it. I don't care. Watch, then, yeah, just we put this fun stuff just on there. Just watch it. But, excuse me, but it's Daniel Radcliffe in the... The parody true story of Weird Al's life. Is it the role of his lifetime? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, he's very he's good. Harry Potter, so, yeah. I mean, is that the role of his lifetime? Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's the joke I was uh, making. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but, he, but no, Daniel Radcliffe is very good in this. He's very funny. The writing's very good. Um, they go over a lot of stuff that actually happened to him in his life, but again, with the parody pen to it as well. Um, a lot of his uh, songs are featured in the movie. Now, I like Weird Al, and I've heard his songs. Mm-hmm. I'm not a... Uh, I, I would say a big fan of it, so I don't right. know. So hearing the songs in the movie didn't feel like hearing something I've heard a thousand times, like maybe if you're a big fan of Weird Al getting into this movie. So it was all pretty fresh and fun for me. Um, but it goes through his whole story. Um, all I'll say is that uh, Madonna, they kill a cartel leader in Colombia and Madonna takes his place. What? <laughs> And then I'm not going to tell you anything else about the movie, but that is happens. It, is it Evan Rachel Wood playing Madonna? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. I like that. So there's that. <laughs> I love that. Um, also, Weird Al was assassinated at the Shrine Auditorium in 1985. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so, if that doesn't give you some sort of idea of what this movie is, it's true events, but really stretch out of proportion. Okay. But it's also very fun. Because you know how I feel about biopics that are made while the person's still alive. Yeah. I hate them. No, no, no. Yeah, this I was I mean, we're Al's in it for a good part of it too as an okay. as an executive. So mm. so he's nodding. He's almost literally nodding at all the jokes. Gotcha. In the movie. So it's silly. Yes. Which it should be because it's yes. Weird Al. Yeah. yeah. So it's Got a it. silly movie, but it's okay. a fun movie. All the cameos because he's going through his entire career. So Gallagher shows up, but it's played by Paul F. Tompkins. Oh my <laughs> God. No my God. That's amazing. Oh, and it's just but it, but it, and it's all straight caricature. Like yeah. what do you famously know okay. him to look like? But, That's but, what he looks but, like. But, I'm sorry. Alice Cooper, somebody playing Alice Cooper. He's he's uh, petting a bow constrictor as he's sitting next to Gallagher have you, talking about Weird Al. But have you guys heard the Gallagher interview on What the Fuck with Mark Maron? Oh, no. Where he like lost his mind a couple years ago. Like it, it, He kind of went off on Mark Maron. And, you know, Mark Maron kind of pokes at you. That's his like yes, thing. His I don't thing. think Gallagher like got that. You know? <laughs> and like there's a very cl- famous like sound clip where he's like, I can do that if I want Mark. But like in that Gallagher <laughs> kind of inflection because they had such a back and forth. Yeah. Go, go oh, look it funny. up. It's wild. Yeah. That's and funny. that's going to be like his legacy for people my generation is right. we're going to remember him as that unhinged man on yeah. Mark Maron's podcast. You Which, know, that's okay. <laughs> well, he's unhinged in this movie as well. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's a really, be. it's a real uh, fun movie. Um, it may be a little longer than it needs to be, but you know, whatever. Um, I had a good time watching it. There's uh, plenty of cameos in this um, famous people playing other famous people. It's great. It's a fun time. Um, he dies a couple times. It's great. Watch, 
<laughs> okay. Weird Al Yankovic story is you, number four. You'll just have a fun time watching it. You've talked it. me into it. I yeah. had like no interest in watching it, but now, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fun. I just totally forgot. That movie slipped my mind entirely. Yeah. Like, I said, like, Colin, I think you're right. Like, I heard about it for one day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then like I forgot out, about it entirely. About it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I hate that that's the, 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 the cycle of movies. Right. right. You know. And it, I mean, and it was the Roku channel. So yeah. it was just right. like, Have you ever seen uh, UHF? Yeah, I hate that movie. I never saw that. I've never seen, I've never seen that either. The movie that he no. was in. Oh, no. I, no, I skipped that. I yeah. hate that movie. I no. thought it was funny back uh, in the day. No, so I don't I know what it was. No, I don't want to see that up, movie. I want to see this movie. <laughs> Weird. They don't cover the making of UHF? No, they the, don't, believe it or not. No, the Madonna the chunk takes up a lot. No. <laughs> yeah. You can see that. So that's my number four. Michaela. <laughs> Your number four. My number four is Prey. The oh, nice. Predator. Mm -hmm. This is the one that kept was, movie? started out on it and then yeah. kept getting knocked down yeah. and then off. I, I did not expect to see like an Oscar bait movie that just happened to have like the Predator <laughs> in it. Like because there's so much of this movie that is like how these Comanche people live. Like there's a we see a whole scene where someone is like in peril and they take the trees apart and build like a fucking stretcher to carry him home that's like an yeah. entire segment of the movie like it is like an examination of how these people live and then the predator happens to walk through their life basically mm -hmm. and i i mean i think Am amber mid thunder is a star she's great uh, i think I like she's to see great she's amazing. Yeah, yeah i thought dakota beavers who played her brother who is not an actor was phenomenal especially for someone who's not an actor mm -hmm. um and coco the dog was awesome amazing. great the dog, dog acting amazing. um i don't know if you guys have seen any of the behind the scene clips they've been going around instagram a lot lately but this dog was a pain in the ass. Oh, like there's it? so many clips of them trying to do the same simple trick over and over again, and the dog fucking it up every single time. And like you hear the handler just losing his shit over it That's too. Funny. It's great. But that dog famously was adopted from a local shelter and not not like a movie trained dog. So that explains a lot. That's um, funny. <laughs> it's like it's like send me back to prison. I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna act for you. Right, because right. like they cast him because of the look. That's the look they right, wanted. Yeah. yeah, you can't have like a modern dog in <laughs> right, like this right. period movie. So no, it's just but, like we can't go for a trained dog. We got to get the look. First yeah, and then see what we can do after. I thought the CGI animals were surprisingly good. Yeah. The bear was, yeah. was a lot better than I had. Amazing. The bear was yeah. better. Than, yeah, we'll say it's better than the Wolfman bear. <laughs> yes, yeah, the Wolfman yeah. bear was. Not oh the man, the, the CG uh, animals I, are better than they were last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just. I, I loved that it is like a little slice of life movie almost mm -hmm. um, and like yeah we should have we talked if you go listen to our Predator 2 episode we talked about it way back then that like this is how this franchise always should have been like the only common denominator should be a Predator is in the movie right like everything else can change so give us Feudal Japan give us a pirate Predator movie give us like what, literally Pirate whatever Jack you the want. Ripper Predator. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yes. Give us literally what... A, <laughs> no, I'm seeing Predator swinging from uh, one ship to another, going down. Yes. Yeah. We could have a Viking Predator movie, you know? Yeah. Like, Ooh, we could that, do that, literally anything. Yes. I'd be into that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, And it's... I, I loved just, like, the way they set her up and, like... The, I mean, 2022 was the year of men not believing women mm -hmm. at the movies. Uh, I mean, yet Prey, Barbarian, Watcher... I mean, the list goes on. Sometimes you to know? goofy extremes, but yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah sometimes to unbelievable in, in, extremes. In yeah. a man's opinion. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, she, said, she said came out this year? Yeah, she yeah. said. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, she um, said came out this year, yeah. Yeah, and Prey was like another one of those movies. But um, for how much time Amber Mid-Thunder had to be on screen not speaking and just kind of like walking around doing things, I was like, she's managing to make it interesting. Yeah. So And the cinematography was gorgeous. Yeah, it was a really good looking movie. The scenery yeah. was beautiful. This um, is um, Matt, uh, was it Matt Reeves? Da Dan Trachtenberg. Dan Trachtenberg. Right. 10 yes. Cloverfield 10 Lane. Cloverfield yep. Lane. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, yeah, and I loved that they did a version in the native language that was done by all the actors, actually, mm -hmm. like, did their own dubbing. So I thought that was really cool. Where's really that nice version available? It's on Hulu. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, because yep. I think I saw the English. I one. watched the English, and then I watched the native language one yeah, after on it. And it, it definitely feels more authentic. I know. For that's sure. why I was like, like when I heard that, I'm like, yeah. why didn't they just do that? Yeah. You know? You but, can't. Oh, you can't. Audience isn't gonna accept that. Yeah, that's that's like a business decision. Yeah, right it was. Yeah. You know, yeah. absolutely yeah. has to be in English as well. Yeah, it's like otherwise. Of, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a bummer. This didn't come out in theaters, but I mean, it still got a lot of watch and it got a lot of good reviews. So, uh, yeah, that's my number four. Yeah, Colin. the one they could have sent to theaters. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Because yeah. that was it, that. You know, like Smile. That was one of those things where Fox dumped it because right. I thought they were gonna. I thought Barbarian was another one that they were mm -hmm. probably like grooming it was on the for line. Hulu. But this one actually came out on Hulu. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, because I saw it too. Yeah. And I thought it was probably 
you know, it's like I've lived through so many bad. Like I love the Predator, the mm-hmm. first one, and I like Predator uh, Two. Predator Two, the second best Predator there is. The second best <laughs> Predator, and then they all went to shit. You know, like you yes. had the Robert the, Rodriguez. The Predator one math is gonna, not good. It was yeah. like it was no. bad, and then the mm-hmm. the Aliens versus Predators yeah. and all that. So yeah. it's like okay. Then, and then that one with Jacob Tremblay was also bad. The is that the predator or was it just predator? Oh, that was, um, it was just predator. Predator, yeah. the predator. That was, the, sorry, that was yeah. That was Shane Black and yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Everyone that forgets that, and Fred that was Decker. very recent. The predator. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't good. Yeah. Boyd Holbrook. Yep. Was in it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Key, oh yeah. Keegan Michael Key was. Yeah. It was, yep. it was awful. Uh, it was bad. It was that was bad, what just really. like a few years ago. Yeah. That was yeah. what three yeah. or four years. I know. Ago, maybe, it was yeah. Shane Black and Fred Decker teaming up for the first time since the Monster Squad. Yeah, and you're like, yes. And then yeah. I remember the trailer. It was like, eh. and then so then this one they like snuck out. That they was like, very recent. Yeah, they yeah. were like, we're gonna sneak it out. We're just right, because we brought prey. in no what we thought what the big was. guns were gonna be, and that didn't do well. So yeah. we're just gonna push this one out there and see mm-hmm. what happens. Yeah. So what are we saying? It's the third best predator. Uh, movie. I think it's the second best predator. It's movie. the third best predator movie. I, I don't like Predator Two though. I'm with we've, you. we've been over this. <laughs> There's yeah. an episode on it. <laughs> I'm with you. All right. What are we on? Number four. Number four, Colin. What's your number four? Uh, I think my number four is Robert Eggers' The Northman. Uh, nice. Um, I, I knew like you were picking this his one. vibe. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, forgot look, it was this year. Yeah. So I had to go back and look. Yeah, right. um, I mean, I was a massive, massive fan of The Witch. Uh, I really liked The Lighthouse, um, and so I like. Robert Eggers like vibe of his movies where it's like it it, it is kind of like when you go to see one of his movies you get the feeling that you're almost you know which I think is that kind of transportive thing that movies do it's like this is a time machine right it's like you're getting close to like he's interested in giving you what this t- period of time was really like yes um there's a lot of filmmaking stuff that I don't know if I was aware of on first watch. The amount of like long shots in the movie, a lot. it psychologically mm-hmm. does something to you because you're watching these sequences kind of play out in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, and the staging of it is then necessarily like a distance from you and there's no cut ins. And it really does kind of like, I mean, it gives you a different tempo for a movie, you know, and it's really heavy into, um, Norse uh, mythology in a way where it's kind of like it bleeds like it's it's like it's going to take you from the perspective of the the Norse people where their belief in the supernatural and their gods like bleeds into their everyday life like if you believe this stuff is real then yeah you interact with it mm-hmm. yeah you know yeah. um but it also I think like kind of I'm a huge fan and you can go back and listen to our Conan the Barbarian episode <laughs> and I'm like you lifted a lot of the basic story beats from Conan the Barbarian. Yes, sure did. A lot. Um, but I mean, I dig that. You know, it's like, how long yeah. has it been since, you know, <laughs> I went and saw Conan well, with Fathom I mean, Events. We don't, we don't get movies like that anymore, so yeah. I guess it's fine, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I was impressed mm-hmm. by the production of it. I was impressed by the fidelity, historical fidelity of it. Mm-hmm. Um I remember there was something else. I remember when it, um, when it came out and we all started watching it. Um, I think Michaela and I were talking about it. Like from a filmmaking perspective, I respect the hell out of it, mm-hmm. and it's it's beautiful. And like, I love that we got a fucking Viking movie, and I love the mythology, the lore. I love all of that. It's just too damn slow. Yeah, oh, yeah? that's my it's, thing. It's, oh, yes. that, as soon really. as he gets sold into slavery, I'm like, oh, it slows God. the fuck down. It's like I don't yeah. want to. I'm not here to watch slave life. Well, I'm here for yeah. mythological trippy shit. You know, and Viking onslaught. I understand. <laughs> Where is the onslaught? So I guess uh, so. Now it's kind of like I, I got it. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, obviously that's a, a thing that you it know. hits a it hits a sag in the middle. That is yeah. unfortunate. It's, but I saw what I what I thought it was trying to do is it's trying to go after instead of like a movie structure, it's going after the structure of like a Viking saga. It's a tale. Yeah. 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 I get it. It's like an so, epic poem. Because yeah. yeah. you're like, how many times are you going to keep coming back to this thing? But it's yeah. like, right. but if you read, you know, it's like, like reading Beowulf. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I get it. Yeah. yeah. So which I guess, makes sense, yeah. I guess. Which is, which is why, yeah. like, looking back on it, you know, after we talked yeah. about it, I was like, I don't hate this movie. No, not at all. It's too slow. I'll give, I, that's very true, but I still liked it. And it had yeah. some really yeah. cool segments that were Yeah, really for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was, uh, that's uh, my fourth favorite movie of the year. I've watched it multiple times. 
Hollywood, and he's doing Nosferatu How at some point, maybe. Apparently, well, allegedly, it's at least two hours. <laughs> To, to the death of the two-hour movie. This is what I want <laughs> yeah. to celebrate. For, uh, going into the new year, let's bring back the hour and 25-minute movie. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, know just right? For, just, for, just for the next year. But it's just an epic guess, saga. Just, just to what, give okay. us time to like breathe for a minute and mm-hmm. then go back into your whole saga. Well, now you've had the mm. uh, bladder-bursting Avatar of the Way of Water experience. <laughs> which, yeah, with that one, I really did have a problem toward the end. I was like, I had to pee. For right, like an hour, right, and yeah. I couldn't get up because it's like I got an hour climax. I'm surprised on it, so. James Cameron didn't invent technology where you wouldn't have to leave your seat. For well, this movie they used to, to have this thing called intermissions when movies. Yeah, do it and bring long. back intermissions. True. <laughs> bring like, back. They, they even <laughs> built them into the VHS tapes. <laughs> yeah. at a we point. we don't need movies that long, but if you're going to do it, yes, give us an give an intermission. intermission. Yes, I can go outside yeah. and smoke up a high again. Yep. Think about what's come before. Yeah, prepare for the next two hours of the movie. Yes. Well, good times. Is. Yeah. All right, Holly, what's your number four? My number four, um, speaking of the two-hour movie, um, <laughs> it's a little glitter. It's more a little more glittery than yours, Colin. Mm-hmm. My number four is Elvis. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Far more Bas- glittery. Baz Luhrmann's <laughs> Elvis. Yes. I fucking loved this movie. Mm-hmm. I've already watched it like three times. <laughs> yeah, it's I've watched it twice. It's on HBO, isn't it? I was, it's I was, on HBO I was, yeah, I was yeah, skipping yeah, past the other day. I was like, mm-hmm. maybe. Now, when I first started watching it. This has got the Tom Hanks role, Okay, yeah. When it, I first started watching it, Tom Hanks is the colonel. It seems a little silly at first. It oh, it's a ridiculous. Silly. You have it, to get on board with this movie you immediately. Ha- no, yeah, like you have to. First going into it, I was like, okay, this is a little silly, and mm-hmm. I'm getting. Oh, it's a little hard to get into it. But then once Austin Butler comes mm-hmm. on stage and is Elvis, I am in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like I am all fucking in. I'm I'm convinced that he's Elvis reincarnated. Like I, I really know, am. dude. It's, it's wild. I really am. He is fucking phenomenal. He sang on the uh, closing of Saturday Night Live. He did. Yeah, the Blue like, Christmas. Oh, mm-hmm. oh yeah. he does. He's mm-hmm. doing a good job. He like and he doesn't sing in the movie. They do. They, they do Elvis's Elvis? voice. Okay. Um, but he can sing like Elvis. Yeah, it's it amazing. Like it. They did Elvis soundtrack released for the movie, and he has several tracks in there. Yes. Yes. Nice. He like. For the for the duration of the movie, he's not singing, but he can sing like Elvis. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. That movie like sucked me in. I grew up with Elvis, so I already have a soft spot. Um, but he is absolutely spectacular. I can't even like the, the scenes in that movie gave me goosebumps. I got chills watching it. The, if the, and his eyes stare into your soul. They do. They're piercing. Piercing. They're piercing. The scene where he sings "If I Can Dream," I was like crying. <laughs> It's beautiful, <laughs> but like there's the movie itself. Like you really understand how tragic his life was, which everyone knows that it was tragic. He died way too young. Um, Not even that. Like the didn't he go through some shit stuff with his mom? And everything? watch the movie. Yeah, watch the movie. I guess I should watch the movie. Yeah, there's a whole they movie about all these questions. There yeah. is <laughs> whole movie about. I've it. seen enough mm-hmm. Elvis movies. No, you haven't. Okay, not like this. This is yeah. No, this is a Baz Luhrmann movie. This is Baz Luhrmann. I love Baz Luhrmann. Very different. Yeah, I love Baz Luhrmann. Like he's one of my favorites. I love Great Gatsby. I, I, he's it's great. a fucking crime. The, this is the first movie we've had from him in a decade. I know. I know. What? <laughs> we went a whole decade without a new Baz Luhrmann movie? This is why we had to be illegal. This is why the world shut down. Yeah. This is why. Yeah. Well, if you have to, what was the last one? Gatsby? Yeah, yeah, Gatsby. Well, if you have to wait that long and you get movies that you like a lot, isn't it worth it? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Because maybe true. he gives one in like three I years have... and she's like, oh, this is a That's true. Another Australia. It's another Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, we're not going to Australia. We're not going to talk about it. Yeah. on some uh-huh. shit. I can't talk about Australia. I know. It's um, <laughs> That movie's like made for me and yet it sucks. Oh, no. But no, the, like this movie, it, it's very, it is very glittery, obviously, because it's Baz Luhrmann. You do have to get on board with Tom Hanks because. Immediately. Immediately. Because it can be very distracting if you don't. You know, I'm having a hard time with Tom Hanks the past few years. He's just going for it. I, I guess so, he's, but he in the way he's going something? for it, I don't want to watch it. I think he's just having mean, fun like, now. Like, this, some of these projects he's doing, I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is this? Like, what he's, was he's Geppetto. He's Geppetto. What was the Battleship? No, Grey, 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 Grey Sides? Grey, what was the... There was a, it was like... There was Bridge of Spies. There was... No, but this one was like yeah. direct to a streaming service. Yeah, I'm was, like, Tom Hanks? Yeah, he did like Apple TV. Yes, it was Finch. It was Finch. It was him and the fucking robot. Yeah. It looked really bad. And then it's like a man named Otto, which yeah. is him just going, no, I'm grumpy. Yeah. 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 Like, ah, I keep seeing I trailers for that. What the fuck is that? It's not, it's not a movie. Like, the, a concept is, is like, not a movie. He's taking the Spielberg yeah. path. Yeah. Just like, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. But, I don't know either. But I'm okay with him having fun with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get on board with it. Um, Austin Butler is amazing. It's just, it's heartbreaking and wonderful. And it's everything that I wanted from an Elvis movie. It's mm-hmm. spectacular. So... Elvis is my number four. 
right? Number four? Yep. Number yep. four. Yeah. Yeah. So now okay. we're going. Sean. We're moving up the ranks to number three. Ta-da. Number three. Barbarian. And that's all I can say about it, according to the show. <laughs> that is Why? officially that all is, I can say about it. That is what the fine print says the on, fine the, print, on the document you signed. The fine print of maybe some upcoming viewer choices. Maybe I can't talk too much about this movie, because we'll be covering it at length later on. But mm-hmm. Barbarian, uh, number three. What to say about a Barbarian? It's... Hold on. <laughs> yeah, choose your words carefully. Well, I want to say... like I was like, you can't say anything. <laughs> no, I can't. Um, I really can't. It's... What an interesting movie and what it does with what your expectations of a horror movie are. Yep. Especially putting uh, Justin Long is in this movie. You've seen that from, you know, a few promotional stills from this movie. Mm-hmm. But w- the way he's used in the movie is pretty great. And it comes from filmmakers who like we were talking about with Watcher, I believe, who know these movies know what you're expecting and twist it around a little bit. Oh, they, smile. Smile. Say, yeah. smile. Oh, yeah. smile. Yeah. yeah, smiles was the one. Yes. Um, and they do that, and they also explore just some dark areas, some gross stuff, but it's yeah. gross. It's also funny in a very mm-hmm. gross way. Um, a lot of good stuff with this movie, a lot of surprising stuff with this movie, a lot of stuff that... Uh, it tickled me uh, being a fan of horror movies, mm-hmm. uh, and it was very fun in that way. Yeah. So Barbarian is my number I will three. say Barbarian is in my top ten. I chose not to pick it for upcoming reasons. For, yes, yes. Upcoming reasons, <laughs> for reasons yes. that will become clear <laughs> soon. And for reasons in which I had no other movies to slot in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Barbarian gets my number three for the year. Michaela, your number three for the year. My number three is Watcher. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I really, really liked this movie a lot. Um and I was kind of disappointed that it only had like buzz for like a week, it seemed like, and then it was gone. Like yeah. there was another mm-hmm. thing that just came and went. Maybe Micah Monroe's spreading part, out her buzz according to this of, upcoming movie. Part of the reason is because of the TV show The Watcher. Yes, that I definitely think so. that's what was out first. Watcher was. Watcher came yeah. out first, yeah, but The so. Watcher had a lot of buzz. And the yeah. premises are so similar that it's they're very it's similar. Very hard to tell them and apart. And they're both really yeah. good. Yeah. 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 So uh, I yeah. I mean, yeah, it gets the Hitchcock comparison a lot. Deservedly so, but I think that this movie has a clear woman's perspective, and mm-hmm. I think that's evident in the directing. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I don't know, as someone who like this movie is my worst fucking nightmare, it was it's nice be, right? to feel like I was in the driver's seat of this movie. You know, like it, it felt like mm-hmm. it was honest to my, I don't want to say my experience, but honest to my worst Please fears. Tell us you that know, story. like, yes, your yeah, worst fears. Yeah. Honest to what like goes through my mind every day of my life, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, and it's, I think it's, I can't imagine not being believed in this way you know in a way that only like women can go through a certain experience because people tend to listen as i'll just as a you know straight white male uh, the people tend to listen when i talk right well this movie makes it a little it stretches uh believability a little bit yes because like the police do tell carl glusman yeah there's been a serial killer decapitating people in this area women specifically like he straight up told that yeah and they witness like a crime scene and still he doesn't believe the fact that he doesn't believe his much, wife after yeah. that is yeah it's kind of uh, it's a stretching well, yeah, but belief here yeah but, there was a there yeah. was a point that yeah. I was with him yes. going like okay he's yeah. reacting the way a, a normal person I think would until he literally sees a crime scene with his yeah, eyes yeah. Until, well, I <laughs> yeah. don't remember if it, that maybe like, it okay. was but there's a point where yeah. it's like okay now the movie just wants to kind of lean into right. nobody believes her right. like, I don't believe that he wouldn't believe her now right, right. You know? right. Yeah. <laughs> it comes to a certain point where we're just like okay I have to believe you right the flip side is something like smile whereas he believes her and it's just like supernatural shit is happening exactly yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's yeah. the opposite side of yeah. that yeah and I I like that I think taking her out of the country and putting her in an environment where she's isolated because of language barriers and cultural differences and just like this landscape in this town, like the weather looks horrible and oppressive and miserable and gross. Like the, I had read that they originally were just going to set it in a different city in the United States. So it'd be a domestic move. And mm. that would be a mm. completely different movie. No, I mean. I, like, the, the it setting wouldn't work. Makes it. it wouldn't yeah. work. Oh, yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. Because... I, I mean, it's a lot harder to believe people aren't believing her if it's her native country and everyone speaks the right. same language mm-hmm. and there's no issues like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's that that movie would have collapsed in on itself had you mm-hmm. had you. There right. would have been a lot of plot holes, you know. Um, but just the language barrier and her having to like go to an internet cafe and all that weird shit like that oh, really makes cafes. it so much more difficult for her to operate in this environment, even under good circumstances, you know. 
So I I loved the way it was shot. It was a beautiful movie. I do agree with the ending, Sean. It is a little bit of a stretch <laughs> in what happened. Lost a lot. Of it blood shouldn't be able to happen that way. <laughs> a lot yeah. Of blood. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, but the ending was like one of those things where, like, and I know we're not trying to yeah. give you for, but it was one of those things where I know that what happens in the movie is what the audience wants to happen. Right. You know, so you do kind of get a satisfaction. But I think the strength of the story would have mm-hmm. been you not getting what you wanted. Yeah. You know, yes. it's like because this is probably more realistic. Right. Unfortunately. Right. And, it, and it, right. It, it gives it, which is maybe why it doesn't it fell in that whole mm-hmm. right. you know, thing of the watcher and watcher coming out and everything. Why mm-hmm. it's not being yeah. like talked about more right. well, because yeah. it doesn't go with that punch right, right. at the end. Yeah, of it. because I mean that's the thing, like, you know, when they're talking about this is not a comparison about anything in the movie. I'm just saying for uh, you know, the the the, the way that the film decisions are made, you know, for years, how many drafts of seven did uh Andrew Kevin Walker go through where they asked him Change the ending, yeah. And it was David Fincher, I think, who saw the first draft and was like, "No, Pit, you got to have yeah, a yeah. head Pit in the too. box." Yeah. You know? Pitt Pit got to a point where he was like, "No, we can't." Yeah, you got to do that. that. that you know, and right. why do you remember that movie? Because it right. committed to an ending. That, right. You know, yeah. I think what really makes this movie work is it goes above and beyond to make you sympathetic to Micah Monroe. Like, not only the language barrier stuff and like, and just everything kind of not going her way, but there's that scene where she has dinner with her husband and his like colleagues oh, yeah. and they make oh, yeah. that joke about yeah. her to uh-huh. her face yeah but they think and she doesn't she's been studying the language yeah, and they yeah. don't know yeah. it. and it's that's like a bridge too far into yeah. cruelty to where you're like okay i'm never getting on his side again yep. like yeah. you, you yep. fully yep. turned yep. on him in that moment yep. and that's like just and that's that's just like on paper doesn't sound that bad, but then the scene plays out and like I almost cringe myself to death in that scene. I could not believe I that this movie was dealing cringe on top of like I think tension what, and horror. I like, think when I was watching it, I literally said, "Oh hell no!" Yeah, <laughs> like divorce now. Like yeah. this, this relationship's over. Yeah. yeah. Like, um. But yeah, it was excellent. Great tension, beautifully shot. The train Micah scene. Monroe, the train mm. scene. Train oh, scene's my God. favorite. We'll stick with me. That yeah. Bag. Don't, don't say anymore. Don't say anymore oh. about the bag. Like, You're just like, this movie made me anxious for a couple days after I watched it. It was just kind of really like good. hung around. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Watcher's my number three. Colin. I, I will say that Watcher. Also on my top ten, yeah. Didn't choose yep. it because I knew you guys were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Watcher. exactly. Yeah. Watcher was very close. <laughs> yeah. I think it was the ending of Watcher. It is the one. It, I was it like, is. like if it wouldn't, it would have been. Yeah, yeah it would have been. I think what part of it is the end. The ending of the Watcher is more compelling than the end of Watcher. Gotcha. Mm. I think that's one of the okay. reasons that the show has kind of surpassed in popularity. Gotcha. Possibly because they came out the same time, and the end of that, you're like, oh fuck, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would have remembered it, or yeah. you would have heard more about it if they would have committed. I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but still, good. All right. So my number three is Barbarian. That was yeah. uh, <laughs> one of the biggest surprises of the year to me because, like, I remember seeing this trailer, um, which didn't really give a whole lot of anything away. No, because mm-hmm. it starts out with the interaction at the front door, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like, so this woman rents an Airbnb, and when she gets there, there's a guy already there, and he says that we've been double booked, and like, why don't you come in? She's in a bad neighborhood, so she goes into the house. And who's the and guy? Then, and who's the guy? Oh, it's uh, Sarsgaard. Scar- Bill Skarsgård. Uh, Bill, Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård, Skarsgård. which is important to this movie. Yeah, yeah. I the, think casting. So the casting in this the movie casting. was fantastic, fantastic. to the letter, fantastic, you know, yeah. like because even and I wish you hadn't given away uh one of the cast really, members yeah, cuz I, I, I didn't know too. that. It would have yeah. been great, uh, but. you know, and just the way that he's used is like mm-hmm. cuz I, I keep thinking Wait, which like, one? Scarlett? No, Scarsgard? The, 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 the other one. one. Uh I keep thinking that another actor playing that role, you know, depending on who it is, you bring like a certain baggage, mm. but his on-screen personas work to the advantage of the mm-hmm. script. Right. The Very script so. was like, I think, uh, you know, Sean, you were saying it's made by people who watch a lot of horror movies and mm-hmm. know where the horror movie audience is. And they're like, okay, we're working to actually do something here. I think that's hard to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, to construct. I mean, that's why when I see these things, I'm so, you know, kind of bowled over by them because it's like. We're tough critics in that regard. Yeah. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think horror movie people can be. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was it was surprising. It was horrifying. It was yeah. funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just flat out entertaining, which Charming. I guess maybe it's... that's what I didn't. I didn't get that I was going to have so much fun. It was right. a fun movie. Yeah. You know, it's like it's this year's malignant. You know, it is. Like, it's uh, I mean, it really is. It's even I think it's even got the font to tell you yeah. the truth. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. Yeah. <laughs> and also the the uh, hands down 
uh, best performance by Brake. Oh, Richard, that, yeah, Richard yeah. Brake. By Richard Brake that yeah. I'll ever be able to tolerate. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. As far as I'm <laughs> best concerned. use of him, yeah. Best use of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. best use of Richard Brake ever. Yeah. Just, he's just a little spice on top. Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah. You sprinkle him on yeah, there, yeah. perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. You shove him down my throat. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're saying all this, but he's you really are, hamburger. you're better served knowing nothing going yes. into yeah. it. Yes, no nothing. Other than that, because I really did think that ad campaign was like, I mean, I was intrigued, but I'm like, well, how good is this? You know, like, right. yeah, it could be. But then I guess there was, I can't remember. I saw it opening night, so I don't know if there was positive word of mouth to it. I just go see horror movies. I don't. So I, I saw it, and then like, I was like, this is fucking great. It felt like there was more word of mouth between me and my friends seeing me like, yeah, this is good. Yeah. And the more talk between like, yeah, I'm surprised it's yeah. good. And so, a lot of people not giving away everything. Yes. I saw it twice in theaters. I oh, saw shit. it the first week it came out, and then I saw it. Two weeks later, so it's third week. There was more of a crowd. It's third week. Mm-hmm. It is. It got a word it. of mouth buzz like it malignant. Did, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, go yeah. go see it. Yeah. yeah, which I dig that. I dig that yeah. it actually had. Uh, and I never. I know Terrifier two did that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't see that movie, so I can't say if it would have been or yeah. not on the. Sorry to all you but, Terrifier yeah. two fans out there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Barbarian was I'm glad that didn't make a list. Definitely yeah. my favorite uh, horror movie experience of the mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Number three, Holly. What's your number three? My number three is a movie that a lot of people have talked about it's uh everything everywhere all at once nice uh, i want to watch yeah. that. i haven't seen that it's good it's really good no it's i want to see it good. it looks good it's sad but it's good <laughs> oh i'm down give yeah. me the sad it's sad but it's destroy me like it's you know a, a woman having an existential crisis which you know god knows i love that <laughs> um and it's it does well and a child seeking an apology from their parents yes which there's, everyone can relate to right there's like, so much like family yeah. friction and drama there and it, it's just they do so many cool things with this movie. There is a silent scene between two rocks mm-hmm. that is absolutely <laughs> compelling. Oh my god! All right, yep, I'm in. All I can say is it's two rocks. Do they have googly eyes on them? No. no. Okay. Not in that scene. Not in that okay. scene. <laughs> Not in that scene. Right, that like, scene. Well, yeah. That's fine. Um, yeah. No, it's two rocks. Subtitles. No sound. Yeah. It's. Amazing! Like okay. this movie, like there's there's hot dog that. there's hot dog fingers. It's weird. This I've heard about great. hot dog yeah. fingers. They it's, sell them now. Yeah, it's so it's so weird and so unexpected, but it's so. Oh, good. this is by the Daniels, isn't it? Who did uh, uh, the Swiss Army? Swiss Man? Army Man. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, okay, is. so this is one of those. Is it an A twenty four movie? Yes, it is. Like, okay, it is. It All is. right. So just it so is. we're we're setting it's, expectations. This is the movie I will never forget. Michaela and I went to see Nightmare. <laughs> we went to see Nightmare Alley last year, and we saw. This is where you have the. Bad experience. Yeah, yeah bad this, trip. And the movie the was trip. also disappointing, so it didn't yeah, help. I had right. a really bad, yeah. the worst trip of my life. Yeah. Stay away from edibles ever since. Anyway, um, the trailer for this movie comes <laughs> up, and it's just a shot of Jamie Lee Curtis. And Michaela goes, oh, yay! And then it says A24, and she goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so deflated immediately. Yeah. It was so funny. <laughs> Uh, but no, this movie is fantastic. I was a little iffy going into it. I was like, really, another multiverse movie? We're doing this again? Yeah, yeah and we're non, doing four of these in six yeah. months. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah, what the fuck is yeah. going on in the zeitgeist? Right. No, multiverse. That's it. Multiverse is it. But that is, it'll in this seep movie, in for at least the next year. But in this movie, it fucking works. Jamie Lee Curtis is doing amazing things in this movie. It's not stuff that I've seen her do. Right. Yeah, good. Something redeeming for yes, Jamie Lee yeah. Curtis. It's, it's yeah. not something I've seen her do. She's doing amazing things. Um, and I'm. What is the main character? The main Michelle Yeoh. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. she's, she's awesome. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. I love her so much. Like, there's action. There's heartfelt moments. It's sad. It's happy. Jenny Slate's in it for a minute. Jenny yeah. Slate's in it for yeah. a minute. And I love Jenny I forgot Slate. About that. Yeah. She's so wonderful. I love her so much. Mm-hmm. Like this movie is just Data's in it. it. We forget. I forgot his name. Data's uh, in Brent it. Spiders? Yes. No, 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 not that Data. Data from uh, the Goonies. Uh, short oh, round. Yeah, short yeah. round. He's short round. Short round. Short round. I forget his name. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's yeah. the husband. He's the husband, yeah. and he's wonderful. He's really great. I hear he's wonderful. Oh, it's so good. It oh, just, that's right. Yeah, because oh. I read a thing. There was an article on him, like having a comeback. Yeah, at, yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. He got featured in a lot of he's stuff. He's in this yeah. movie, he's really and good. he does wonderful in this movie. All right, I gotta watch this movie. Yeah, it's it's really good. It it just. I don't know. It was moving. Yeah. It was very moving. Um, I highly recommend it. I saw that it was on Obama's list of favorite movies this year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, there's a reason everyone's talking about it. I was like, mm-hmm. not to brag, but me and Obama have <laughs> we the same we, taste. We, we taste. basically saw it together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, there's a reason everyone's talking about it. Yeah. It's wonderful. So yeah. that's my number three. Okay. I could use a wonderful movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right now. Whew. All right. So we're on number two. Number, number two. two. What's your number two, Sean? Whoa! We're going to tread familiar territory. My number two was the Banshees of Inna Sharon. Nice. The. <laughs> 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 no, no. Colin, can 
a little too much, it. little too much bubbly there, Colin. <laughs> yep. I know right it's a shock nose. that it was number two. <laughs> it's like Colin cannot believe it. <laughs> what? That's your number <laughs> <What>? two. <laughs> that was an actual spit oh, take. Oh, that was wow. That was perfect timing. Sorry about that. Colin I has soaked everybody here in the greatest I, time. The I was sure I brought that out of you, Colin. I was so confused. I was like, you know how much he loves Embrue. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? We're all Martin McDonough fans around here. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Right. Three billboards was on the whole of our list. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. are drinking. It the was. Bubbly. It was. Yeah. It's celebrate yeah. time. It's I, I th- on your forehead. <laughs> <Is> it? <laughs> okay. It does get everywhere. Check your glasses later. Yeah. 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 Speckled uh, everywhere. All yeah. over the place. It's probably the ceiling. All right. It's everywhere. I'm sorry I do love, to take your moment away. From uh, you. No, that's fine. I do like Martin McDonough. I find. I think I like this one more than Three Billboards. I think I do too. I, it just is. It's like an Irish folk tale. Basically, because right. I mean, just think about the Banshees of Inisherin, and then you get yeah. this story. It feels like it feels a like, fable. Yeah, yeah, the story is told over and over. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you one night about the Banshees of Inisherin, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you get this, and it's I think it's just wonderfully well acted. I was very excited to see Brendan Gleeson and Colin uh, Farrell they're back so together. Good again. together. They're, they're so like good them. together. They're so good together. Wonderful. Nothing will ever top in Bruges for me because no. I think they're pitch perfect, fantastic right. in that movie. Um, but this is good too. Um, I like that they they feel like very human people. Um, in in this era, it is what, 1923. For the mm-hmm. longest time, I was like, "Where are we? What what year? <laughs> right. Like, is this? It feels modern yet. Like, but I think that's what's great about it because it feels like a story that could be told at any point. It's just that mm-hmm. this location is kind of key to it. Again, they're on an uh uh, uh um not fake, but uh a made up mm-hmm. island on the out um off of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the relationships, the relationship Colin Farrell has with his donkey Jenny. Oh, oh my god! god. I mean, justice it's, it's for the, Jenny. Justice for oh. Jenny. Um, and, you know when you do that stuff with animals in movies, when you know the 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 slightly the dog too, the dog too, yeah. and you know, mm-hmm. but the slightly dull man mm-hmm. who has a donkey as his best friend, mm-hmm. like already, I'm like my heart <laughs> is there. Like I feel everything for this. He man. always lets it in the house, which yeah. pisses right. his sister off. And, right, god, I and love it. The whole dynamic Carrie between Condon him and his great, sister. Which, she is. Yeah, we haven't given yeah. enough credit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I love their dynamic. Mm-hmm. She's great in this. Everything that she goes through. Um. Uh, what Barry Cogan? Is, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, he, I think he's he's great. He's the funniest because he's speaking the quiet parts out loud. Yes. Yeah. for the entire movie, and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, because it, like he he gives the stuff, he puts it on a surface level where you're just like, oh, just shit, obviously. But it's very funny he has stuff. No he has no filter in this yeah. movie, mm-hmm. but he's also it's funny that his story, if you look at it the way that um Colin Farrell treats him and kind of their relationship, it mirrors. Brendan Gleeson's in his yes. kind of if you yeah. look at it yeah. and the way that ends up and then his story with you know Colin Farrell's sister and all mm-hmm. that stuff it's just it feels so uh, it feels so very raw at certain moments it hits you in the gut yeah it does <laughs> we're just like it is a raw movie it is yeah, raw yeah. And the, it's kind of unpolished and rugged yeah. the vulnerability that these characters can get to at certain points you're just like oh I, I know you almost watch it and don't want to feel that much. Yeah, it. I yeah, I was like, I don't want this to affect me this much. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're just like, oh, I wasn't prepared to like. Okay, I have to access feelings now. Great, it, thanks. He wasn't worried. All of yeah. these things you're saying is the only reason it's not in my top. Yeah, five. I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like. There's the brief moments of like self awareness in the mm. movie though too. Like yes. when uh when Carrie when when Carrie Condon's talking to Brendan Gleeson, being like, why'd you dump my brother? And and she and he was saying, you know, I want more out of life. And she's like, we well, live on an island off the. Coast. Coast Ireland. What what are you expecting here? Like yeah. the fact that she's like self aware. Like you know, this is it for us. Yeah. Like, and then um, when he says, "Well, you're 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 just not very nice, and people don't like you. That's why you don't have any friends." When he says that to her in front of the whole pub, and that sends her on a whole spiral. Like it's a whole another sad arc to this story. It, it, you know, and, uh, <laughs> even that, even uh, even the other version of that, the him telling um, Brendan Gleeson that he, maybe you weren't very nice at all, and he comes to that realization mm-hmm. right yeah. there. It's like maybe was, oh, yeah. oh. it's heartbreaking stuff. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Realizing this. But it feels people. good. It's like that that catharsis. catharsis. Well, yeah, you yeah want cathartic that. cry. You know, yeah. you, you want know? that for these people. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's a very I, it's very funny. Um, and it's sometimes in a very heartbreaking way. Um, I it's, I like I like the characters, the directing, the writing. Obviously, again, it's a beautiful movie, just based on where it is. Um, <coughs> It's it's a violent movie. I can't mm-hmm. forget to say that as well. <laughs> yeah. Like, but again, we've said what the violence. You know what what you get from it. Um, you get humor from it. You get um, you get mm-hmm. many things from it. Um, it's a movie that's going to make you feel things. Um, it's a movie a, about like finding. I guess maybe coming to honesty um, about certain things. Um, damn, everyone's real good in it. I was going to mention something else with the sister. I 
thought was there was a good joke. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. just a very good movie. Um, yeah, everyone's doing great, and even yeah, I mean, I, it's my number two for a reason. That um, scene when um, Colin Farrell's drunk and going off in the bar, and she walks in behind him, and he doesn't know she's there. That's yeah. great. Oh. Where he's nice about that. Oh, yeah. wow, I was gonna say where like sometimes the language of the movie is writ large. Where Colin Farrell's walking to the bar at some point, and he turns to look over the horizon where he sees the Civil War, which is the mm-hmm. backdrop of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, I, I don't exactly remember what he says, but he says, uh, I, I wish the, you the best of luck, no matter w- how it ends. And he's speaking to them, but he's speaking to the movie at right. that point. Mm-hmm. And it just feels like it's those moments that you get throughout the movie. And it just, it feels like a very, uh, feels like a very real movie, despite mm-hmm. some of the things that are obviously yeah. not very real about right. it that are yeah. not going to happen. Right. But again, that leads to the Irish yeah. folk tale of it all, the which moments, is what I like. The moments that they're still kind to each other, even yes. though they're fighting. It's right. just... Yeah. Like, yeah. like the dog. The dog is yeah. the bridge between them. It's right? really nice. Ugh. We didn't even mention the creepy witch neighbor. This mm-hmm. creepy witch neighbor. The creepy yeah. witch She's neighbor. The banshee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she's the, always lurking around the stone yeah. walls, waiting yeah. to corner you about she's, some prophecy. Right? Yeah. She's oh, she's gonna give yeah. you a prophecy, yeah. whether you so, want it or not. Yeah. So there's a there's yeah. a death coming within yeah. the week, yeah. Yeah. and some shit. But it's yeah. uh, it's a very good movie. This uh, is an Oscar contender. Yeah, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. But uh, not without merit, I would say. Right. So. No. Yeah. No. It's great. Like a it's a great movie. Yeah. A wor- <laughs> yes, a worthy one where there's some good raw performances. Yeah. Because it's such a simple story, but they get so much out of it. You know. But it's, I mean, that's the, the quality of like a good screenwriter. Absolutely. I mean, I guess yeah. he's proved himself, you know. Right. Like he is a legitimate filmmaker. He, he can write and direct. You right. Know, like he's yeah. master class in both yeah. areas. Absolutely. Right. But you say uh, like a simple story. and But I think that goes with the setting as well, because it's within you can have that simple story and it's in a simple setting. But because they're uh, they do that, the impact feels bigger. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you get these we get tons of big action movies and we'll get to those on the list as well. But we get these. <laughs> Tons of the big action movies, and it gets so it can get so convoluted and everything. But mm-hmm. you can just have a simplicity of story and simplicity of location, and it all works for you if you just pare it down and kind of you know make something where it's humans, which I think he did here. Um, I think it has a real impact. So uh, mm-hmm. Banshees of Inisherin is my number two. Mm-hmm. Michaela, number two. My number two is Elvis. Uh, yes! Yeah, this movie. Um, I've watched it twice already. And I, I was, I was texting Holly when I watched it because I watched it the same day as you, but after you watched it, yeah. And I got like twenty minutes in, which is not even past the insane plot, like setup device for how the plot is told. And I was like, this movie's so insane, I'm sold already. Mm-hmm. Like, um, so the thing with this movie is, and why we say you have to get on board right away, <laughs> is that it is told from the perspective of Colonel Tom Parker on his deathbed. Right. Uh. Saying that he is not responsible for Elvis's death. Yeah. And he literally is like a, uh, uh like, twas the night before Christmas ghost <laughs> telling this story. Right. Wandering through the Vegas casinos. Telling, okay. I'm not even, I'm not even yeah. kidding. This is the cold open no, no, of the movie. This is, uh, this is this how is it opens. More, more interested to watch It movie. throws you in the deep end right away with this weird shit. So you have to get on board with that. <laughs> and uh, you have to get on board with the fact that Tom Hanks' performance is like he just broke out of Arkham Asylum. Yeah. He is literally, he does look like a penguin. He's lurking in the shadows. He literally creeps up on Elvis several times and tries to touch him like Nosferatu over his shoulder. It is yep. like, so you have to get on board with this insane reality. But it's a fun reality. Like, it's a great time. Um, This movie has, like, it feels like a superhero movie of the early 2000s. I can't explain it, but it has this arc of, like, Elvis is the hero Mm -hmm. and Tom Parker's the villain. Yeah. You know? And that is the arc of this movie. And And there's, like, at the beginning of the movie, he's even like, some will call me the villain. Yes. And it's like, well, yeah. But I'm here to tell you, I did not kill Elvis I didn't kill Elvis. That's how this movie starts. This this feels like... Tom Hanks from Lady Killers got fat and then found <laughs> Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the movie we got. But it but you can balance that camp out perfectly because Austin Butler is the best maybe anyone's ever been in a biopic. It's phenomenal. Uh, it's it's the, at the end of the movie they do a cross cutting of they'll of Austin Butler performing and Elvis and they cut back and forth and it's so seamless that you feel like you're seeing an optical illusion or like mm-hmm. you're stroking out because you're like wait, wait. And then you start to it's like when you're looking at a deep fake and you're like, I yeah. can't tell which one's the real one. It legitimately it's took jarring. me a minute. Okay. Yeah. Now, see, that's what I saw earlier yeah. this week on the internet. And yeah. I'm like, are they doing a deep fake here? Because no. they were doing that comparison. That's they, they what do, the movie looks like. They do like. a lot of comparisons on the internet. Yeah. But at, no, the, no, no. But at this, the end of the movie. This was from the movie. Yeah. Okay, no, the, the movie doesn't. The movie, they yeah. do it. Yeah. It's just at the end, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
But this movie, it's gaudy, it's tacky, it's over the top in all the ways Elvis was. But wasn't Elvis? And all the, that's why it's perfect. Like, Baz Luhrmann and Elvis is the peanut butter and chocolate, like, (laughs) Reese's Cup of a movie. Throw a few bananas in there. Like, yeah, and deep fry it. Yeah. Yeah. It, like... Like, I watched this and I wanted to run through the streets being like, Boss Lerman's back! Boss Lerman's back, everybody! Like, it felt like a return to form and it felt like this might be his... I think this is his second best movie behind Romeo and Juliet. Like, I think this is one of the best Boss Lerman movies out there. It's up there. It's... it's, I don't know how honest of a portrayal it is of Elvis or how polished or one-sided it is. And I don't really care. Probably the, the same as Weird yeah. in the Weird Al Yankovic story. <laughs> but I don't care because the movie's so fun and it's maximalist in every way. Like, there's so much crazy CGI in this movie and just, like, mm-hmm. the concert sequences are just, like, yeah, I had goosebumps. Like, yes. I... My favorite scene in the movie is they're trying to rebrand him as like wholesome Elvis. And he's like, I'm not doing this. I'm mm-hmm. not wearing a tux and tails. And they're like, OK, go out and do your whole wholesome Elvis performance. And he goes out and he humps the stage and sings, I'm evil. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. To like national television on yeah. his on his wholesome comeback special after yeah. he went to war. And like Elvis, like literally looking dead in the camera, like humping the stage, singing, I'm yeah. evil. is like the ultimate troll. Which happened. Yeah. It's and so it's great. incredible. <laughs> and then you like the performances you get, the costume design, the makeup, the craft yeah. and care that went into this movie is so apparent. And that's what I love about Baz Luhrmann movies is that like you see every dollar on the screen. Mm-hmm. It might be eighty five million dollars, but it looks like eighty five million dollars. It's a movie, beautiful, you know. And we only get that treatment to superhero movies nowadays, so it's mm-hmm. nice to see it applied to something as like basic as Elvis, mm-hmm. you know. Even well, I mean, you say basic as Elvis, like yeah. people. I mean, he was a superhero. People yeah. looked yeah. at him yeah. as a superhero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that this spans way into his tacky like Vegas residency years. It's the whole mm-hmm. picture. I'm kind of you know? interested in watching yeah. this and movie. It's good. I mean, <laughs> like my other one of my other favorite biopics is Walk the Line, and that's a James Mangold movie. So it's very strict and straight yeah. and serious and sure. very dour and very Oscar bait. And like this is the complete 180 of that. Yeah. But I love them both. Like yeah. they're two halves of the same coin. Yeah. So I I mean, if I would say even if you don't like Elvis, but you just like spectacle, just it's this is the ultimate spectacle movie. You know, I'm I'm upset I didn't see it in theaters. I Me wish too. I would have. Me you too. Know? Yeah. I wish I would have gotten like ripped and gone seen in an IMAX. You know, <laughs> it would have been great. But yeah, yeah. Elvis. Just dilated full. Yeah. Elvis going into every <laughs> yeah. inch of them. It'd be a great movie to watch on psychedelics. It would be so much fun because Let's it's see. so any, colorful any and stylized. Like they would be. Yeah. yeah. Austin yeah. Butler was um he was Tex Watson and he once was. Yes, he was. Yep. Yeah. in he Hollywood, was. right? Yeah. So this is like uh, star making performance. He for is him. a goddamn movie star. He is this the, Absolutely. like he better not squander what goodwill he's gonna have from Elvis because like Right now, he's what he does like next top of the world. going to be very important. I yeah. Think. Well, he's going to yeah. be in Dune, apparently. Oh, that's right. That Which makes sense. And they won't have great. to make his eyes blue. Right. Is he, right. Is he <laughs> fade? Uh, yeah. He's uh, yes. okay. The character that Sting played in yes. the original. Okay. He'll yeah. be good. Oh, move. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That'll move. be great. Harkonnen. Yeah. 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 I'm down for that. Harkonnen. Yeah. Yes. Bring me. Bring me Dune too. I'm ready. I know I need it. I'm ready. I need Christopher Walken, the Emperor. That wasn't this year. Was it? Last year. Damn. Last year. I need, I need the again. next one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm ready. All right, Colin, what's your number two? Uh, I was. I'm shocked that this movie is as high up on the list Uh-oh. as it is. Uh, my second favorite movie of the year was a movie called The Unbearable Weight of yes! Massive <laughs> Talent, uh, starring Nick Cage as Nick Cage. No, starring Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Or Nick Cage as as Nicholas Nick Cage. Cage with the K. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a weird meta movie. Like when you first hear about it, you're like, okay, we're going into like. Um, becoming uh or being john malkovich territory or something like that right um and it's basically nicholas cage gets offered this you know like he's down in his luck as as an actor and he gets offered a million dollars to go to this island and hang out with this guy for his birthday it's uh pedro Pedro pascal Pascal. Pascal. who you know who wouldn't want to hang out with pedro pascal right right? you don't have to pay me a million no well but that's i guess the casting again in this movie it's like this buddy movie that is so like sweet natured which i guess because there's elements of you know comedy uh drama thriller you know which i guess like all the stuff i didn't foresee happening in the movie but Man, what really like got me about this, and I don't know. Is there a if heartfelt just... reflection on the Nicolas Cage career? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's kind of the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're a Nicolas Cage fan, I think it helps. There's a lot of people I think were kind of, you know, like they're over, you know, the, the overexposed Nicolas Cage or whatever, because I know he's been doing a lot of direct-to-video movies to 
you know, I mean, he just he takes whatever is offered to him. Right. It seems like so it's hit and miss. But this was an actual like you know movie we're, movie. We're still, maybe this is the peak of the Nick Cage res, uh, uh, resurgence. Well, resurgence. You keep coming back because then you got Renfield that's coming out. That's right, a, yeah. a, a Universal picture that's coming out uh, next year. Um, but I guess the thing that impressed me about the movie was the script mm-hmm. that it had this structure to it where. And I mean, this is like classic uh, storytelling, right? Where you had payoffs and set, or, uh, setups and payoffs. The whole way through the movie, I'm like, this is not easy to do. And when you see it done well, you sit there going like, man, a lot of fucking screenwriters are lazy, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, because I, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I've told people to watch it and they watch it. And it's like, well, it was kind of predictable, you know, or whatever. But there's like a satisfaction I guess to me to see a movie that was so confidently constructed that it's like, yeah, if they set something up, they pay it off. They set this up and every time they do it, it's funny and clever, Mm -hmm. you know, and it was just like a joy kind of to watch this movie uh, and experience it. It took me by completely by surprise that I liked it as much as I did. And I'm like, you know, uh, kudos to the, the, the folks who put it together because I don't think that that is an easy thing to do, but they make it seem easy. I like, you know? when, I like when Colin has a joyous surprise. That was yeah. a joyous yeah. surprise. I like, yeah. I like when Colin feels joy yeah. watching yeah. I mean, it. Was, I, out, yeah. Just out and out joy. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's why it outranked the horror movie this year. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barbarian was a joyous experience also. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. I don't know, joyous. Well, I had some, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll get into it. Right. Yeah. We'll litigate uh, it later. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, unbearable weight of massive talent. You should seek it out. Mm-hmm. Number two, Holly, what's your number two? My number two, uh, throwback to earlier, is Smile. Oh, nice. I nice. loved Smile. It was such a surprise to me how much I really loved that movie. Like we said earlier. I'm, I'm the, very much a surprise. I will, yeah. yeah. I will agree with you and keep the, saying a surprise. The teaser for the movie, like we said earlier, is like a 30 second teaser and it was like trailer perfection. It was, it, it was just quick and creepy and what was the, Le- what was it? Was it just, it was, it was just, did it end with the turnaround on the smile It was just the scene of her walking by the, the patient, du- the patient okay, the, and he's smiling on the bed and she like stops and like goes back and yeah. looks at him and she like, and when she walks in, she like gets closer and closer and he's just like, just smiling and like that was it. That's I the trailer. I think played some freaky you know, music some freaky or, music. you know, the right. violin yeah. shriek. And then it was just like, smile. smile. Mm-hmm. Like, and then somebody else smiles, you see, and it's like, that was it. It was yeah. creepy as fuck and perfect. Because like people seconds. smiling is fucking creepy. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why <laughs> is, like, this is the most it's the harmless. Eyes. <laughs> it's Yeah, obviously, like, just a normal smile, not creepy, but. It's that, a fake smile. That smile. But it's also, creepy. I think they have that slight look down, like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that I like think the, is the, the predator, you know, not the yeah. the predator, but I think you know he, Stanley Cooper pre- kept using yeah. that look all the time. You know, when a human being lowers his right. his right. head, and you get that kind of you know, and it's because they're smiling at you, yeah, like, for no not reason, looking, they're, because yes, it's not, not because it's else. not human behavior. I think what Michaela was saying though, in the eyes, it's yeah. because it, the, there's a smile in the face that's but like forced, a menace in the eyes, yeah, and the eyes yeah. don't have the smile. It's you like know. Holly, you remember the episode of How I Met Your Mother where they're talking about. Um, Kyle McLaughlin's face mm-hmm. and they're talking about how the bottom half of his yes. face is smiling but the top half has angry eyes yes. so that's what it is it's yeah. like if you cover up you know one half he looks angry the other half he looks like he's smiling mm-hmm. that's what it is but the, the viral it. marketing campaign for this movie was genius that, it, people if at nothing baseball else, games yes. really love it smiling. If yeah. you, I, because they spent whatever money to get people in the, in the very uh, in the front behind row. home plate yeah to stand up and s- this is the best the, marketing, the marketing I've seen in a while. The marketing while. was so good for this. I wrote a paper on it for my public yeah. relations class. Yeah. <laughs> That's and what I got you an a. do. It was an amazing campaign. That's great marketing. It was wonderful. And it this movie, like, you know, we talked earlier how about how it it covers it covers things that we've seen before. But honestly, watching it, I didn't feel like I'd seen it before. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like I knew I had, but it didn't like pull me out of the movie. Right. It, it was never. It was never distracting. I was never like, "Oh, I've seen it. Oh, it's predictable." No, like I was in it the whole time. You no, know, because they've seen those movies. I think that's what I appreciated about it. It's like, yeah. yeah, okay, we're doing it. Follows of the ring, but they've seen those, right? And they know what you're thinking right. is coming yeah. next. So, so, it, so even though it's content that maybe we've seen in some capacity, it doesn't feel like it when you're watching it. And it had this like visual, um, you know, like 
color palette. It was very controlled, very yeah. uh, like yes. pastel colors. And oh, yeah, because it, 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 it was, like, was very pink throughout the entire yeah, movie. It's yeah, it's very carefully composed movie, yeah. which I kind of, you know. Out, she's and, uh, pink because she's purposely trying to get past that. And so she's wearing these brighter colors yeah. to try and liven up everything. Yes. Because she's purposely she's trying, trying to, to move out, on. Yeah. She's trying to block out the dark past. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So she's wearing pink to ward it off. And absolutely. Else. And yeah. Yeah, and the whole most of the movie takes place during the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yep. not till later on in the movie towards the end that we get to nighttime shots, really. Right. And yeah. Like to be scary during the day is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Like that's huge to me. And yeah, I guess it was a scary. It had jump scares. It was a scary movie. Yeah, yeah I think that's it was scary. also why I was it like, had, oh, impressive. It had you got jump me. scares, but they weren't cheap. They were <laughs> right. cool. Yeah. They were like original. And it was ju- it was also jarring, especially the yeah. moment like especially the big trailer moment was her. Uh, uh, Sosie Bacon's in the car and her sister comes out of the house to the car yes. and then her head swings Oh my down, God. Which is it terrifying. Was, it was terrifying. I, but I but, knew it was coming but, and it still fucking right, got me. But, <laughs> I, but afterwards where it shows that she's not there and it just shows Sosie Bacon screaming and freaking out in the car yeah. is... Th- it's also terrifying, yeah. and it's yes. well, and then the fact that it goes in and shows the kids seeing her again, yes, right. But uh, the fact that that is happening, yes, right. outside of that, all of it is so unbelievably there, chilling. There is psychological damage done in this movie that is un- oh, irreparable. Yeah. Yeah, that kid, yeah. Yeah. That kid, <laughs> that kid <laughs> will never recover. No. Like that kid yeah. can never see his aunt again. Never, no, no. Yeah. Never. like never. And he won't. But it's, never, yeah. never, never. Insane. And then, like, obviously, the culmination of everything coming into like the big bad reveal at the end. Yeah. Was horrifying. Yes. Yeah. Like, that's the moment where I was like, this is going to be, like, the this is where it teeters. If it yep. goes over the edge of stupid, this whole movie's ruined. But if it's cool, mm-hmm. like, it's good. And it was scary as fuck. Yeah. And this was based on a short, uh, I think, right? Yes. That yeah. the guy had done, uh, the director had done it. I'm like, well, you got you to gotta keep an eye on this this fella. Who yeah. is it? Do we know? We don't know. Okay, but, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I made a note at no, some point, like, yeah. you know, this is uh, no, it's, it's a good debut it's feature. A le- it's a well-written and legitimately scary movie, and I was really surprised. Yes. And from Paramount, which means he's not working for, for Warner Brothers, so he won't be doing the next Conjuring movie. Yeah, 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 it's very true. He might know. And they and they've said he said there is I mean there's possibility for a sequel and stuff like this. And they yeah. and they've made it. I don't want one. No. I I mean I prefer, I wouldn't want one either, yeah. but maybe cuz maybe they can yeah. figure out some I'm, way to do something else. I would with. rather he did something that was as cool as Smile that wasn't yeah. Smile. Yeah. I was I was legitimately surprised how much Same. I liked it and legitimately surprised that Smile made my number 2, but mm-hmm. it did. Okay. Pause. I'm doing the Oh, no, 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 not that pause. Um, no, the actual pause in the podcast for you listeners. Uh, right now, if you don't want to hear spoilers for Smile, because I want to talk about that kind of reveal at the end. Okay. okay. Well, just because because, okay. because the reveal is we get a monster. Yeah, it is there's a, a legit there's monster. There's a legit monster. monster in this movie. It's introduced, I mean, first of all, it's introduced as the um, as her mother, right? Because the whole story right. is that mm-hmm. it's right. revealed later on that she let her mother... After years of what seems like abuse and neglect and everything, she lets her mother die, which is the guilt she's feeling mm-hmm. throughout the movie, which mm-hmm. is causing this kind of whole thing. Yeah. And so, so there's a lot of psychological element, but then in the end, there is a, a monster. A giant, which made me think, again, this makes me think of It Follows, because mm. there was the huge guy who walks through the doorway. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. That but, scene will never leave me. For but the, the whoever, whatever, I haven't looked into whatever this thing is or how it was created or who it was. But it's fucking like I love this is the stuff that scares me. Yeah. yeah. Because it always like in when we saw like it part two, when you hear the when you hear the giant thing stomping through the darkness mm-hmm. coming towards mm-hmm. you, it's scary. And that's what this thing felt yeah. like. And that and when he's finally cornered Sosie Bacon and he's like reaching his thumbs in her mouth and to yes. go oh, oh. into her body. Oh. The sound drops out and all you hear you hear like a creaking and a yeah. to it, which is scary <laughs> as fuck. Mm, yes. But and there's that and also obviously the the face rip off with the multiple smiles and everything. Yeah, that Holy was shit. Oh. like this. And the, even the, Got me. Even the dream sequence where Cal Penn's face comes off yeah. was fucked. And up. I, I yeah. loved, I loved yeah. your reaction when you were finally like, "I get why you wanted me to watch this movie." Because yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to the end, and holy shit! And yeah. that, and then after all that horrifying stuff, it's the simplicity of of the ex boyfriend, the cop coming in, seeing oh, her, God. and just the realization that she got it. 
what's going to happen and mm-hmm. only seeing it through his uh, through his eyeball mm-hmm. and then cutting out right. which is a great it's a perfect ballsy ending. Lo- yeah. it's love a great that ending. ending I love that it's a great ending alright come back in listener <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to s- discuss that because it's <laughs> so good yeah very big mm-hmm. fan of that mm-hmm. that's my number two dun 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 we, we're here Sean Sean number I, number think, one. I think the number one I have a feeling Colin's going to agree with me on this one. I could be very, very wrong, but my number one for the year was Top Gun Maverick. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> because my God, what a fucking great movie. Just a just a good old fashioned like, I believed in America when I watched this You're movie. You're doing like a Popeye right now. <laughs> it, really, it was. It was. It's, and it's especially number one because I'm surprised that a sequel to a movie that came out how when did the first one 86 86 so it's 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 my age it's me yeah. um wow what a one movie one Sean ago one yeah one <laughs> exactly one Sean ago never came out <laughs> one Sean later we got a sequel which manages that be our unit of time yeah one, one Sean's, Sean's yeah, no, like it was like that. three or four Sean's that's yeah. fine I don't know how many things you're gonna get be, going to be able to measure by Sean's yeah. but that's fine with me my name has been used as adjectives many times um um, uh, what a movie! What just what great action set pieces! What fun acting by uh, everyone involved. Tom Cruise is doing great. Um, uh, the the role he gets put into as Maverick in this, as the teacher of these, but also where it ends up that he has to become part of the mission because he's the only one who can do it because he's fucking Maverick. The family stuff, because obviously you got to bring in uh, uh, Miles Teller. He's Miles Goose's, Teller as uh, Rooster. Son, yeah. yeah, he's Rooster in this movie. Which I've never been a big Miles Teller fan, but he's perfect. Neither casting. am I. Like it's perfect. He looks, he looks the does, part. But yeah, I hate, I hate yeah. Miles Teller. But I don't he like looks him. The but part, perfect yeah. casting. He's good in this. <laughs> um, the dynamics between everybody. I mean, Val Kilmer comes back for it. They have a great I cried. chemistry and moments together. I like I love them yeah. together in this. Um, the the final mission at the end, even though I think Tom Cruise should have died at a certain moment, it would have been great. But what comes after? I thought they were going to kill him. I thought they were going to kill him. <laughs> I was like, shit, he's oh, dead. But I, I like that about the movie that I really was like yes. going like, oh, wow, they may actually kill him they, here. Right? I'm like, wow. Cause they I, wish they, I wish they would have. <laughs> I mean, I wish they would have too. I, I really have do like- Have the balls. Do it. Right. I really do like what we got after that because yeah. it's fun. Then it launched behind. into like this 20 minute thing where I was like, I didn't think that we were going here. No. But all right. I'm like, oh, it's a behind the scenes <laughs> spy movie now. Yeah. Where they're, and then that was fun. And then that they got fun. out of there. It, feel, it felt like it hit all the emotional beats. It hit the familiar beats. I don't think the relationship between like Tom Cruise and uh, Jennifer Connelly was like it wasn't too much. It kind of fell within rhythm of the movie. It's not the strong point of the movie. Other things are, I think, but I felt it was the weakest part. It's the weakest part of the movie, I will say. Everything else yeah. is much stronger and everything. But I enjoyed that it was there. I do. You know, that's what I'm saying. Is, yeah, I'm glad it's there, and it felt within the movie. It felt pretty good. Again, it's not the greatest part of the movie, mm-hmm. but um, uh, th- uh, thrilling action pieces in this movie. Um, so much good stuff. Uh, Tom Cruise was doing really good. Everyone was doing really good. Uh, a thrilling movie. Uh, the flight like, choreography is amazing. It, yeah, it's great. Um, top notch. Fuck Mission Impossible Fallout. That movie's child's play compared to this movie. <laughs> as far as everyone going like, it's the greatest action movie. Fuck you. Uh, the <laughs> top Gun Maverick was just like for, and that's a movie that deserves to be two hours long. And it gave me thrills from <laughs> start to finish. It's a spectacle. It is a spectacle. Mm-hmm. Um, a satisfying spectacle. Uh, really great. Had a lot of fun. I took the kid to it. He was like, that was great. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Take um, your dad to it. Yeah, t- yeah, take your dad. Take your son. Like, it is I took that, my dad. <laughs> it is that kind of movie, which yeah. is great as well. Um, yeah, everyone should watch this movie. It's just, it'll, it's satisfying. Mm-hmm. Big, satisfying action movie. When I don't like big, uh, you know, I get exhausted by like these movies now. So to have one that had me on the edge and interested the entire time, beautiful. Love I it. hate that I liked it as much as I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm surprised. Just, I I'm just it cracking up because I, I feel like it, the tagline should just be take your dad. Like take you're saying, <laughs> it should just be, should right. just be right. Top Gun Maverick, take your dad. Take yeah, your dad. Like, that's be. all you need to know, right? It should be. Like, it yeah, really yeah. should be. It and, should be. Uh, and you all really should. So take your yeah. dad to the take my number one. Take someone's dad. Take someone's dad. <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason. Just a dad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Grab a dad yeah. off the street. Yeah. Yeah. Be your own dad. You won't complain if you take him in to Top Gun. Be your own dad. I don't care. 
I no. took my nephew, so I'm on the other side of that. So right? you're That's the dad. Right, I'm the yeah. dad. Yeah. There you go. Dad. Well, Sean did too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a dad movie. <laughs> yes. Top Gun Maverick, my number one. My tagline is, "I hate how much I like." It. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which they could put that on the poster. <laughs> uh, that would should be on the poster this of like horror be. movie websites. Like, I hate how much I like it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Michaela, what was your number one for the year? My number one was Barbarian. So oh, I mean, nice, yes, very nice, very yeah. Nice. Stay yes, tuned. Yes. It'll get a. It'll Stay get tuned. It's proper due soon enough. Um, I will say when I did see it in theaters, I did think like we should really do this in the freak show. Like <laughs> the first time I saw it, and the second time I saw it, I was surprised on how much it rewards a rewatch. Like mm-hmm. it's a really good movie on a rewatch. Yeah, I haven't gone back to it yet. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay so I'm very with it yeah. Later. So yeah. Um, I'm excited for us all to rewatch it together and yeah. dissect it in the full detail it deserves. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Yeah, another instance of men not believing women. To an yeah. insane degree, yeah. um, but big thing. Um, there are so many little pieces of this movie that I like, and they all come together in a way that surprised me. And I feel like we're kind of a hard crowd to mm-hmm. surprise. You know, we can yeah. usually kind of. And I remember when I was watching this movie. In the first act, I was like, it feels like we're heading towards the end of the movie right mm-hmm. now. And yeah. we were 40 minutes yeah. in, and I was like, I'm very confused. It does structure and I, things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, I went, and I looked at my husband, and I was like, is this a short, or is this like a full-length movie? And then for a second, there, I was like, wait, is this an anthology, and I didn't know it? Right. Like, I was <laughs> going I through that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going I through all these too. scenarios. Why does it feel like this is ending? Yes, so yeah, yeah. I, le- I legitimately yeah. was like, I feel like they would have told me I this thought, was an yeah, anthology. I thought I misunderstood the movie. Which makes the second part even a more enjoyable surprise. That's what keeps keeps you engaged. Exactly, I guess is, exactly. It keeps yeah. you on your toes. Yes, you don't great. know um, what's coming next. Great. And like it was able to get me anxious about normal everyday things happening in a scene, which is when like seasoned horror people like us, if you can make us anxious by pouring wine or folding a sheet, that's that is a, <laughs> that's gets a you, feat. You it know? gets you anxious about certain things and then has you laughing at yeah, them. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep, 20 yep, minutes yep, later. Yep. Um, but we'll I get into I, it in more detail. So like You'll see. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think a tape measure scene would make me laugh so <laughs> yeah, hard. Yeah. 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 But we will get into it. We'll get into it. We, got, we, we have a lot to say on it, I'm sure. Yeah. I know I could probably fill a whole hour myself. I feel like this movie, so. I feel like this whole like countdown has been a like stay tuned for later episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's marketing much, for our future stay episodes. Tuned. It really, truly is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Colin, what was your number one of Number one, and why is it Halloween ends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would I would I would fall I'd out of my die. chair right now. Well, okay, well die. then you're about to be surprised. No, it's uh, not Halloween ends, but um, no, I'm surprised that this movie is my favorite of the year. But oh, it no. is Top Gun Maverick. Ah, wow, I, I'm, surprised. I'm, not surprised. I'm surprised because I'm not surprised. Well, because you've heard me talk about it Figured since. It. I guess I've heard you talk about into... Chuck Norris loving America so much that I knew this was going to be your favorite. <laughs> well, but that wasn't really. I mean, that's. <laughs> There okay, so the, I guess the things I liked about it, it's like this movie has action that rival. Well, okay, I don't know if it's it's this year's Fury Road to me. Yeah, right. Okay. It was like I can see one. that. This good was person. the like an, an I almost action got movie. Mad so and then I was like, yeah, you're right. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't rival it, the action no, in that movie. No, but of this year, but I get it. Right. Um, I missed the whole Top Gun thing when it first came out. The original movie in 1986. It was the the highest grossing. Everybody was talking about it. It's the movie that made Tom Cruise a star, uh, and I caught up with it years later. I'm like, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, and then watch it down here. And since then, I have you know had a, a greater appreciation for Top Gun. Yeah. So when this one was like, oh, they're making another Top Gun, like okay, you know. And then I really was on the fence of whether or not I was even going to go see it until the week it came out. Then it was like I got caught up in it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go see this. And then I was fucking blown away because yep. i think it, you know in the 30 year interval you've come to expect a different thing from tom cruise movies this is in keeping with a modern day tom cruise movie this is the kind of thing that he does now but he's bringing back this character that you're familiar with from the the older movies but i think you know there is this uh like meta thing happening with this movie like this is the most tom cruise character that tom cruise has ever played uh, Tom Cruise? Like, can Tom Cruise? Be? Yes, this <laughs> Maverick is like I the I- idealized Tom Cruise uh, character. I, I imagine think. him working on planes in a hangar somewhere. Well, just as but Tom it's Cruise. the drive, right? It's this yeah. guy has yes. a fucking drive, the drive and right. just, just cannot. And I'm like, well, that's fucking. Tom I believe Cruise. he would go for ten, yes. and beyond ten. Yes, yes. and I think that Tom is Cruise. the thing that makes Maverick like an aspirational 
hero. You know, it's like, cause I was talking to my nephew after seeing the movie and he said the, the same thing without prompting, you know, it's like, I think that he would do this anyway because he has to, there's just no other, you know, it's like this guy's right. got to do it. He's got to be the best or he just is the best. It's like, you just kind of, you know, and it gives you a kind of like Cruise knows he's Tom Cruise. He's like, I have to do this. But, and Maverick too. I guess, yeah. you know, it's like, uh, Tom Cruise has this thing, which I think they're like acknowledging kind of in the movie. This is also why I'm like, Oh, this is the, you know, they're like, well, you're too old for this. You know, it's like you, you, at some point we got to put you out to pasture. You can't keep doing this kind of shit, you know, <laughs> forever. Right. You know, and it's like he recognizes that. And still, this is like the last great mission or whatever. Yeah. He, he's going to pull off. It was like, OK, so this is, I guess, maybe that kind of meta layer on it. Well, <laughs> kind of added sure to my would, appreciation yeah, right. of the and movie. That will inform his performance. Like if he's thinking the same thing as well, because he knows Right? He's got to know. Yeah, because he wouldn't be 60. I mean, how old is Tom, Tom Cruise? Cruise? And his yeah. Yeah, he's got to be 60, right? <laughs> they gotta know. I think he's older than that. Yeah, 62. I mean, like at some point, 62, you can't keep I'll doing die. all this. Yeah, this crazy jumping out of planes and doing whatever. Is he, is he in his 60s? Probably. No way. Yeah. I'm going to find out. Yeah, we're, find we're out. Find I need out. to know how old Tom Cruise is. Because my parents right are like 65, and he's 60 years old. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. He's got, yes. But even like the plot of the movie is i think sean you said it best it's satisfying you know it's like because i know that they had worked a long time to try and come up with a sequel plot that would you know and then when you watch it well it's obvious this right. is the way that you had to go you know <laughs> and i like the fact that it became like a um a mission movie or yeah. you know like a heist yeah, it's basically what it feels like. It's like we we put a heist on onto it. It's yes. like you got to do. It. I'm like, okay, this is kind of compelling, and it gives you something to work for, and you got to like put the team together and all yep. this other stuff. And it was like, it was really well executed, and um, the director was uh, Joseph uh, Kaczynski, right? I Who, so, yeah, he did Tron Legacy, and he also did. Um, Oblivion, right? I'll right. He's with, worked with Tom before. Yeah, because Tony Scott did the original movie, and he uh, passed away. And yeah. I know that this movie like has the uh, Simpson Bruckheimer, even though Don 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 Simpson, thank you, has already uh, passed away yeah. also. But you know, there's a lot of callbacks and stuff to the original films. Mm -hmm. uh, original film. It's just it's a very entertaining movie from start to finish, and thrilling, I guess. And that's why. I'm putting it as my. It's got something for everybody. There's yeah. a there's a whole uh, there's a montage of uh, beach is. football. And this there movie is beach football. It. Call back instead to of, instead of yeah. volleyball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was a few lines of dialogue that legit made me roll my eyes. Oh yeah. But because well, they're like on the nose, kind there's, of. You know, it's yeah. like well, yeah, the original movie's corny as fuck. So yeah. I'm sure yes. that this one's corny too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has a yeah, but it's more it. I think it it's holds growing. up better because, you know, it's Bro. more modern, at least, you know. But, yeah, it's a, it was a good time at the movies. Yes. I went back and saw it again, and I think I've seen it like three times. So I was thrilled. I was kind of using that as my bar. I'm like, which movie have I watched the most yeah. this year? Oh, yeah. And it was Top Gun Maverick. I can't, I can't do with that with, my, with yeah. mine on the watch. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween ends at the top. Uh, you heard it. I'm Halloween ends getting glare. Is Sean's I'm getting <laughs> I, Maybe most watched movie of the year. Uh, I'm getting glares from everybody around this table. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, yeah. Holly, what was your, <laughs> let round us out. This is the number one movie of 2022. My number one movie. Um, throwback to Collins number two. The unbearable weight of Matt. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Um. So obviously, you you did a great job e explaining the movie and everything. I I feel like I feel like the feeling that the movie gave me is really what sells it. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. When I, I'll I'll be brief, but the day I saw this movie, it was a horrible day. I actually left work early. I was at work and I was really upset. I had a horrible day before. Um. Something had happened. And I was just a mess. But I was at work on a Friday. My boss comes up to me after a couple hours and she's like, you're bumming me out. <laughs> she's like, is there anything that will make you feel better? I was like, no, nothing will make me feel better. She's like, OK, will anything distract you? And I was like, I don't know. I just have to like get out of everything. Maybe like go to a movie or something. She's like, then go. She sent me home for the day. This was like 11 o'clock in the morning. You have good coworkers and bosses. I have a great boss. <laughs> great she's, boss. She sent me home at like 11 o'clock in the morning. She's like, just go. Go to the movies. And I was like. Okay, so I left work. I looked at my phone. I was like, well, what's playing? I was like, oh, that new Nick, Nick Cage movie came out. Called my dad. 
want to go to a movie? <laughs> He's like, okay, I don't think he even asked me what we were saying. We go and legitimately the rest of the world was shut out for two hours. Mm -hmm. This movie made me laugh. It made me like visibly joyful. Like I was physically joyful watching this movie. I I'd forgotten everything that was going on in my life for two hours and it was just pure bliss. It's funny. It's heartfelt. Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal are the buddy comedy duo that I never knew I wanted. <laughs> They are Yet wonderful. it seems so obvious. It does. It really does. I didn't know that I wanted it, but I should have known. And it's it's so good. There is a scene when the two of them are on drugs. Oh, I was going to say that. And it is so <laughs> funny. It's so yeah. funny. I was laughing hysterically. Are they looking at us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I, la I laughed so hard. And I've rewatched the movie since then, and yeah, I still yeah, laugh yeah. at it. It's so good. Maybe I'll go home and watch and, it. And, you know, you don't have to have an extensive knowledge of Nick Cage's career, because my dad doesn't fucking know. He no, doesn't. it's the movies you know yeah. Nick Cage from. Like, yeah. there's going to be some moments that if you know Nick Cage movies you're going to get those jokes and it's going to be funnier to you. I like that he gave a call, call out to Mandy. He did. <laughs> he I'm gave like, a call out to Mandy. Oh, that means he likes Mandy. Yes. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> right. They're not going to yes. mention something he hates. No, he, he calls out some of his... Yeah, it was strategic oh what movies they called out and which mm -hmm. ones they didn't. Yes. No, like, it's there was true. no Wicker Man call out. No. Yeah, there was. Was there? Yeah. Yep. Because yep. <laughs> I had to explain that to my dad. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the, bees? Was, the bees? The bees? It might have been the bees. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it is... It is just a joyful movie. Like it's funny. It's hard. It's you were you're spot on. It's so well written. It's it's just the storytelling is fantastic because it gives you like they. It's like they took all of Nick Cage's movies. Like okay, we like him in action movies. We like him in drama. We like him in funny yeah. movies. Yeah. And that's the movie they yep. made. It, they it, took it all shifts. Of it shifts because I thought it was yeah. going to be a comedy. And then it was like, no, it now it's a thriller. And now it's a thriller. And now it's an action movie. Yeah. And it works. Oh, and the addition of uh, Nikki. Nikki. Uh, yeah. You know, because the, 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 the young, uh, yeah, like, he uh, does have, like, Valley Girl Nick Cage. He has visions. <laughs> he has visions where he, like, talks to the younger version of himself. But isn't that his character from Wild at Heart? I think it was younger. I think he's, like, Valley Girl uh, yeah. Nick Cage. Yeah. Because it was like at the beginning of his career, you know, it's talking to the the wild man, talking to the old man. Because when it, when he first started having these scenes where he's like talking to himself, I'm like, what the fuck movie is this? But as it goes on, it's so funny and it's so enjoyable. And it made me forget about the rest of the world for two hours, which I think is a huge accomplishment when you're going through something really rough. So it. Like I, when I saw that movie, I knew I was like, "That's going to be my number one." I just knew it. I tried starting out this show as a, a callback to that movie with my long. You did, uh, you did. Uh, I appreciate I that. I thought that's what I you were. That. I appreciate <laughs> that. Very long. So yeah, on verbal weight of massive talent is my favorite movie of the year, hands down. All right. Well, now we know. So uh, briefly, yeah. so Sean, your oh, yeah, top we, five. We must sum up. You, yeah, and do you do you have any like? Um, uh, um, Special mentions. Honorable any any mentions? honorable mentions that you want to say? Not to explain. Not, that, not to like go into detail. Just no, to, no, like, no, not, not that I wrote down. Ugh, there are, but I've forgotten. That's why we Shit. have Letterbox. Well, yeah. your uh, watcher and I am watcher um, and smile was number five. Number four was weird. The Al Yankovic story. Please go watch that. Uh, number three was Barbarian. Uh, we'll wait on that one. Number two, <laughs> The Banshees of Inishirin. Mm. And number one, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Michaela? Uh, number five was Banshees of Inishirin. Number four was Prey. Three nice. was Watcher. Two was Elvis. And number one was Barbarian. Uh, honorable mentions, Orphan First Kill was fucking oh, awesome. Oh, you watched it. So oh, good. my God. Can, wait, I can finished... I do honorable mention to Orphan since this was no, the first uh, time I watched <laughs> it this year? Okay, wait. I watched it. I finished it like 15 minutes before I came here. Oh, I was fresh out of seeing it. Okay. <laughs> I did not see that movie no, coming. Okay. That's Don't what I liked about it. I haven't seen it. He hasn't seen it. He hasn't seen it. He hasn't seen it. Oh, my God. It's so good. All right. I'm down. I feel like we should do an episode on it. Actually, that was a crazy fucking movie it too. was 
I want to put it. It defies your expectations. But it's so think, trashy. Yeah, yeah. I love how trashy yeah. it is. It's it is so not good. afraid to get down in the Fuck, muck. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. The I, original is a class act. This one's the trashy yes, follow, but, but it's I, fun. It's but so I good. thought I had it figured out, and I yeah. did not. Right? <laughs> yes. I was like, I'm 10 steps ahead of this movie. I see you. Right? Nope. I'm nope. wrong. I'm so wrong. Yeah. That movie surprised um, the hell And out of Isabel me. Furman is the fucking MVP. Holy shit. The fact that she, I love that they didn't recast her or they didn't CGI de-age her they just put actors on platform boots and amazing yeah. and you know force perspective and makeup and that's i love how lo-fi it is amazing and, like the craftsmanship Those, yeah, is great yes. yes it's yeah it's, it's a right, treat go fucking watch orphan first kill and it's i love delightful. julia styles yeah julia styles is oh, great she in it? it yeah oh all right yes yeah. i haven't seen her in something in a while. it is a delightful I mean, things, little but... movie it is yeah it's, it, is. it got overlooked this year i feel like she but it's great. she she's she's the mom in horror movies she's like yeah. she's a horror she, was, she was in the omen remake yeah yes we have we have schreiber in it yeah all right i'll give you okay so my number five was x for the northman Three, Barbarian. Two, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. And one was Top Gun, Maverick. Uh, four, uh, special mention would be The Banshees of mm-hmm. Sheeran. Um, scrolling through my letterbox, because right. that's how I remember Smile. <laughs> um, Vortex, the Gaspar No movie oh, that wow, starred Dario that. Argento. Oh, yeah. um, 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 keep going, keep going. And, and Crimes of the Future. David Cronenberg. I uh, did not uh, yeah, did a movie that, that. Yeah, it's uh, that was a kind of a wild one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the black phone didn't make it on my list. Uh, it shouldn't have. It was yeah. fine. Uh, the sadness. Uh, it was a. I believe it was I've a heard Taiwanese a lot about that. movie. Oh. Very grim. That's okay. Very, it's really fucked well, up. It's, yeah, but, I like it. But I don't need uh, that. <laughs> fast paced. Um, you know, like uh, frantic. But you're like Jesus Christ, yeah. grim. Um, and I'm gonna go with that is probably it. Okay, okay. well wait, when did I see Fresh? I liked Fresh. Yeah, that was this year. That was this year. Yep. I'm gonna put Fresh on there, and I believe that is all. Holly, my top five. Five was Bullet Train. Four was Elvis. Three was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Two was Smile, and one was The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. My honorable mentions were Banshees, Watcher, Barbarian, Orphan First Kill, and Prey. Yeah. Nice. Prey would be my special yeah. mention, mm-hmm. I think. Prey, Prey was very kept good. going like... off and on my list. Yeah. I really liked Prey. Mm-hmm. I like Prey. And Orphan First Kill, too. Orphan First Kill. But I, so I fucking watch fun. But I, re- yeah. but I really do want to do an episode. I on do, that. too. It's, I was like, <laughs> I have really... so much to talk about after watching this movie. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah. I, want I to haven't seen it. Eye. Maybe I it's, pick it. You should. You should. You should. You really should. It's shall, not all right, well, then, then then yep, don't talk about it. Okay. All right. All right. Shall we get to the worst, worst movie the worst. of yes. 2022? <laughs> starting with Sean, what's the worst movie you saw this year? The I had to go look through the list and just to remember, because when it comes to the worst movies, I if it's bad and everything, I just shut it out and I don't want to think about it. And it was a long year. And it was a, it felt like a yeah, long year. Remember, a lot remember yeah. Scream came was out this year. This year. Yeah. Which it's been it, a long doesn't year. Doesn't it suck when people keep trying to make you remember yeah. the worst movie? Mm. Doesn't that no, suck? Yeah. No, I haven't had that this year. Doesn't that I, suck? Because I've been <laughs> just forgetting everything. But um, uh, the worst movie for me this year, and I went into theaters and saw this, uh, was Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> yeah, that was a good that was a good pick for this slot. <sighs> Why is it the worst movie of the year? Because it's a bad movie. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, here we get into, and this is what we do now. We bring legacy characters. This is a year of legacy characters and legacy sure story. was. And, I mean, maybe not even this year, even last year as well. Legacy storytelling, where we think, or uh, where we can bring in characters, some, mostly in long-running franchises. We can bring characters in from previous versions, bring them all together with new characters, and have all types of new adventures. That seems to be what everybody's trying to do this year. But if they take their glasses off, they need to do it the exact same way they did 30 exact years before. Exact same way. And like they have the to staging. look the same way. And yep, yeah, yeah. Can't deviate it there. Yeah. No, because it, it is. What, do, do you remember, was it South Park that did the member berries? Yes, uh, they, was, yeah. yes that was That has Park. stuck with me forever. It was That's accurate. This is. Yeah. It's, me- it's, it's member. It's member. member. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember. <laughs> it, it really has. Remember it when really... Laura Dern took her glasses she off did. just like the this? The same yeah. way. Like, they're trying. It's fucking nuts. And they're really, they're really going for 
those nostalgic moments. Okay, but, but this is also like, I mean, we're saying we, we like Top Gun Maverick. Yes. And which legacy character? Well, I mean, it's but what to did they do? The exact same like flight choreography as like the first no, movie, though. No. Yeah, no, so it's, yeah, it's, that's it's, the thing. But it does it, start off with Danger Zone and like, it does. but then it's a different movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. And then it goes, and then it is a different. Movie. Yeah, I guess it's that one is a it's, continuation of a, a character. Right. Where when, these where ones just seem like, be. why are we bringing these people? Hang back? on, it's like there is story there that could yeah. be told because we haven't had four movies in between to tell these stories as well, but. I don't like this series anyway. I didn't like Jurassic World. I didn't like Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Word. I think it was called. And I don't like this one because the writing to me is not great. I don't think. Um, specifically in this one, what they do with the returning characters, it's not... It, it really feels like we're bringing them back just to have, just because everyone else was doing it. Like Just this is to the have them in the movie? This is the fad. Yeah. This is what we're doing. This will yeah. get people back. They're, they're not naturally inserted into the storyline. They're not needed no, and like, in these storylines. Can you imagine seeing the original Jurassic Park when you saw it in 1993 or whatever? Yeah. And fast forward now, the villain is Steve Jobs, who has locusts that eat all the food in the world. And that's that's a problem. <laughs> that's the, I'm serious. That's, that's what right. this movie is. And that's it's a like, very big problem <laughs> that's where we ended for up. Jurassic World yeah. Park movie. Yes. We've become convoluted. And you Ten two when you get six movies down in a franchise, yeah, that can happen. I'm looking at you, scream, <laughs> but it can happen. But it's happening with Jurassic World, and it's so some of it's so ham fisted. They get, there's a point. There is a Steve Jobs substitute, yeah, or or uh, not, not maybe not yeah. even Steve Jobs, but um um Tim Cook, yeah. who also runs Apple at this point, or even maybe like an Elon character, yeah, even. but yeah. yeah, but he's very yeah. older. But yeah. it's it's also it, it's it's a confusing character. And that that character is not sure of himself, but it's so ham fisted that there is a part in this where the T-Rex from the first movie, who's still alive. God, thank you for, you know, keeping that through line. <laughs> What's he been up to? I'm glad. I'm glad <laughs> I'm legacy character. Legacy dinosaurs. We have legacy dinosaurs <laughs> that we have to bring back. I mean, did, that. did someone like go recruit him? And he's like, ah, well, he I, I haven't done it. I, I don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. But he anymore. was in Jurassic World. Or she was. It's the female. Oh, yeah. But she was in Jurassic World. Right. I don't remember if she was in the second she, one. She I said, I, I retired from that. I don't do yeah. that anymore. And she they talked back into coming out of retirement. But she walks past a circle, behind a circle fountain. To the point where she makes the, the Jurassic oh, Park no. symbol. Yeah, yes, it, 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 it like she freeze frames like, on the, the movie. She makes the Jurassic <laughs> Park <laughs> symbol like on it. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. And then we move on from that. Yeah. But it's not. They're not doing anything new. They made the characters that did come back, especially Jeff Goldblum, mm -hmm. who I got was, if nothing else, after the second movie, a relatively smart and cautious character. Yeah, based mm -hmm. on his performance, okay, I would. Yeah, he's a bumbling idiot in this one, which I mean, he kind of was uh, a little more. How to say how he was in the first movie? He's a little more slick, but he also is smart. He's asking the right questions in the first movie. Yeah, he's a smart man. He's educated, and that feels like it all goes out the window in this. The characters don't need to be brought back. Um, they do nothing interesting. The only thing these people think is cool about a dinosaur movie is if we make a bigger dinosaur yeah like just that keep is going bigger purpose for these movies yeah. let's mix dinosaurs and make bigger dinosaurs eventually well, get the meg and listen to our episode on that one like, yeah. bigger doesn't they make think that's the scarier. attraction to this but the i like the characters you know interacting with these things oh that's the other thing in this movie, they skipped the most interesting That's part what I was gonna say. They of skipped where we the left movie. off in the other. They, they skipped, skipped the, the movie. movie. They did. Because it's four years after the, you the get, story you of this movie. You get like movie. a Vice News montage yes. of what like life is like when dinosaurs bled at the, in. At the end of Fallen Kingdom. And that's like the first the, yeah, four the minutes. Dinosaurs are released loose. into the yeah. wild, okay, into remember that. the yeah. world, and that's where they are. Yeah. They skipped four years later. And, and that's where this movie starts. And dinosaurs are part of the world now. Yeah. They skipped all the we skipped interesting over parts. the transition. How do entirely. dinosaurs incorporate into the world? Yeah. What are the 
interesting and cool things that can happen when you have to adapt to a world that now has dinosaurs in it. We skipped over all of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We are heading yep. to a movie that uh, I, we skipped I didn't necessarily movie. care about. You yeah. skipped any of the interesting parts that we could have gone to. Yeah. And, to, and instead, that's where they that... focus on the clone daughter lady. Yes, the, that, cl- the clone that daughter now, lady. What's his nuts? And her have to <laughs> have to try and raise, and it's a parallel to the dinosaurs. Okay, but the, the, and I'm the, like, it's a dinosaur yes. movie. <laughs> you can do this. It's They've simple. It it's and if simple. You can't make it interesting. Don't do it. Right. There's I, so much convolution in this movie. The drive-in scene. First of all, not in the movie. Not in the movie. Uh, but I'm uh, pretty sure it thing? was in the montage of like the four years yes, that happened. Of the four, it's, I'm sure it was like one of the inserts in the montage. Right. Instead, it turns but it's not into even a, in that. It turns so. into a globe trotting James Bond action movie at a certain point because they got to go to these different places all over the world. Dinosaurs show up for no reason. There's one port. Uh, one point. It it feels like I mean everything feels like a video game now, but it feels like uh, Chris Pratt and the other uh, hunter woman land in Antarctica. They they crash they crash an airplane, survive that. Plus, we've gotten so far out of the realm of what people can survive. In these <laughs> I mean, right. they're not just riding pterodactyls at this point. I, they might as well. It wouldn't have felt out of place in this movie because it feels like that's honestly, they, they should for. lean into the weirdness. Yeah, I was I like, mean, they should just go for it at like, this point. Probably just lean into yeah. it. If you're gonna be this ridiculous, eventually, the bi- eventually the big badge would just be a giant asteroid that is a dinosaur. <laughs> yes, yeah, that would yeah. be amazing. Right? But have you ever played a video game where you're like, all right, we've gone from this building, we have to go across the uh, the Antarctic trench to get to the next building, but yeah. before we can enter the building, the big boss comes out in a tank, and we have to fight him first before we can get in the building. Sure. <laughs> it happens with a dinosaur in this movie uh, who yeah. comes out in a winged raptor who they have to fight. Not mentioned before, or after this movie, who have to fight before they can get in the building. It there's nothing interesting about what these people are doing. It's I think it's the thing. Like video games have ruined big ruined. spectacle they, they, movies. Of, yeah. Well, I can, because I can, I can ruined, play a better yeah, movie than I can watch. It's more interesting yeah. when I have to play it yeah. to watch somebody passively. Just the cut scene from the movie is yeah. not excited, or from the game is not excited. Right. Exactly. But we have. Well, we say. I don't, I don't wanna, care how I fucking say big video it is. games have ruined it. They've they've taken up the slack in their storytelling on their part of it. So yeah. they are ruining one part. Movies They're need to catch up to with games. Part. Yeah. I think that is kind of a thing. They need to be. Well, you they need to know what games what movies are doing can do that at this point. video games can't do. Right. And I think that's where yes. they think the spectacle. We have to top these things, but you can't. I remember playing Uncharted Five, and there it was just like, like a movie, a spectacle that kept going for yeah. six hours or whatever. A movie can't do that. You no, can't, can't beat it. So they gotta just figure out a different way else, to do it. Which is the drama stuff. That shit. Yes, you know. So they can't replicate that. Yeah, but, but not they everyone don't... plays video games. Mm-hmm. Right, that's true. that's true. But I think, well, I, that's the whole thing. I, it's just it doesn't do any good work with the returning characters. I do not care about the characters from this original series because they're not they interesting. Suck. They they do suck. I don't like any of them. Um, I, I think it's a failure on of of box office proportions. I've always said that, and Colin Trevorrow comes back to direct this one. And I've always Ugh, said that you could you put go. anybody in the director's seat of that first movie, and it would have broke all the records anyway for whatever reason. Because big dinosaurs were back. I like the first one. Okay, there you go. I, uh, I don't mind the first one. I'm sorry, the first one being Jurassic World. Yeah, right? I don't, right. I don't yeah, mind yeah, yeah. that one. I don't mind it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looking at the three, yeah. it's the least offensive of yeah. all of them. Right. I'll give you oh, that. Oh, yeah. I hated the second one and was yeah. like, fuck the third one. Yeah, don't know. Yeah, no <laughs> reason to watch. But it. at least we're getting that uh, Adam Driver 65. Looks Which, really cool. I was say, I'm that like, does that, look really cool. This is where we need to go. Yeah. Let's spread out the dinosaur love. Yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> the effects house is working on the dinosaurs. Yeah. D- dinosaurs movies. aren't proprietary. Anyone can make a dinosaur. Right. Movie. And like, I feel like we've gotten, we were at that point for a long time. It's like Jurassic Park is dinosaurs. And yeah. We'll just leave that alone and not deal with it. No. Give us more dinosaur yeah, content. I think let's kill Jurassic Park, but keep the dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. use them in more interesting ways than Jurassic Park seems to be able to do. Right. Because they decide to just skip over those parts mm-hmm. and make. Jurassic World Dominion. So that wow, are we still on me. That's my yep. worst, <laughs> worst of the year. Passionate. Sorry, passionate. Sorry, passionate. I took so long on that. But it's yeah, okay. I don't understand. Like that is the most whew, skippable mm-hmm. movie in the world to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and considering it, its legacy broke box, box office records. I don't understand. But there you go. That's me, Michaela. Your worst 
of the year. Oh, man. Okay, I watched a stinker today that's just been kind of <laughs> like hanging on me. I can't shake Recency it off. Bites. Yeah, um, Firestarter. Ooh, uh, you, wow. Why? Why? Wow. why? Um, <laughs> okay. Now, why did you decide to watch well, this? Now, now, to be fair, I was considering it because John Carpenter did the, the music. The score is the best thing about he, the movie. He was the score is amazing. He was supposed to yes. direct the original but then didn't get to. So he oh, got yeah. to do the yeah, score yeah. to yes. the, the remake. So this was directed by Keith Thomas who did the vigil. I didn't see the vigil. I don't know if it's good no, or not. I seen um it. this movie fucking sucked. Um <laughs> it so it's a Blumhouse movie. It Is this the the craft whatever of no, this No, year? It, this so okay, I haven't seen the original Firestarter. I'll okay. just say that. Right. So but uh, so I don't know how the original's boring. I don't know boring. this one's boring as fuck too. Yeah. Oh, this, this one's, one's got, biggest sin in is it, it was it? the longest ni- Zach Efron's yes. in it. It's the longest 90 minutes of my fucking oh, life. Cool. Oh my god, it was painful. But I, so I don't know, you know, what's different from the original versus what I saw, but this movie had kind of like a lot of like logical fallacies and loopholes that didn't make sense that you kind of caught right off the bat. It didn't explain the rules of the universe very well, which is a major problem in a movie like this. And I, the whole time I was watching, I was just like, Zach Efron, honey, call your agent and fire them because you passed on Barbarian, but you were in this. Yeah. He did? Yeah, he passed on Barbarian to be in this. Well, it's a Stephen King property and but, something ooh, he, he it's knew bad. about. Like, it's it's bad. You know, Barbarian would have been a much better choice for I'm him. I'm glad he passed. I'm but glad he passed. This, you know, I, I don't want to say he's doing his best because it feels like no one's really trying in this movie. But this movie also had the, the same problem the last season of Game of Thrones had where it was really, it's so dark. You can't see anything. Like really? it's like it's the like fire is supposed to light up. Yeah, the it's like it's dark because they know they're gonna have fire eventually. Is what it feels <laughs> like. So it's very desaturated. It reminded me of like antlers or even like what was it? The prophecy we watched that was like you couldn't see anything because it was so dark. Mm. Or, or the relic. The, the relic. The relic. Oh, yeah. The relic. The relic. The relic. The relic. Lit by it, was like, it was like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. this is what fire starters like, <laughs> and it's. Okay, so I, I do you guys mind if I like spoil this movie for a little bit? I go assume no one's it. gonna watch it, right? <laughs> okay, uh, if you care about fire, or they've seen the original, yeah. yeah um, no, go okay, for it. so Tell in the everybody. in the original, are her parents? Do they have powers? They are the they're subjects of an experiment mm-hmm. by the shop, okay. and I think uh. mom dies and dad takes Charlie and. Okay, so that is the same. Okay, okay, so this one, the mom has telekinetic and the dad has telepathic, and the dad's job is he like is a life coach, quote unquote. So Zach Efron's a life coach. Okay, and so, so true. he, so he like meets up with people who are like, I want to fix this about my life. And then he looks in their eyes and like hypnotizes oh, they're them. They're just and on the it. run in the yeah. first yeah. one. No, yeah, he, they don't he, go on the run to like the third act. Oh, does, one. He yeah. Any, yeah. does he have any ill effects from his, yeah, his bleed? eyes bleed, his eyes bleed. His it's okay. fucking, okay. it's fucking ghoulish, man. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm yeah. wondering if he's, um, if he's it makes more sense this without well, the first one, it was a nosebleed. And I'm like, okay, cause there's some kind of cranial thing going on. Sure. Brain bleed. Yeah. Your eyes bleed. Yeah, What's eyes going bleed. on there? Yep. It just, yep. his, his eyes bleed. It just hit the eyes before um, it came out the nose. And uh, but like him and his wife have this whole like parenting debate on like he thinks he, he literally keeps saying that like his daughter should push down her ability and not use it and ignore it and it literally sounds like oh, a conservative no. dad being like push down your feelings is what it sounds like, like. Oh, push down your yeah. gayness yeah, you're yeah. not gay exactly. and and then, X2 like, has yes. already been it is X2 it yeah. is the worst like, version of X2 we've done this yes. before okay, yeah. so let me and then, ask but you. then the mom but then the mom's like no she needs to know how to control it so that's the parenting that's debate that's the plot of Frozen yeah, is this it? is not yeah, the original plot of Star oh no they had this fight back and forth let me ask you this I guess this was just looking at the materials from this movie yeah. and I'm like okay you have a story about a young girl who can start fire yeah. but we're you know 20 years into superhero movies exactly so yes. does this let one... alone X-Men movies right. yeah. this was the same problem I think we had with uh, the craft legacy but I would say also Brightburn is a better better yeah. version of this movie so they go watch Brightburn uh, but are they, yeah. does, did it feel to you when you were watching this that it was a superhero origin story? no no it, it, it really okay so the trailers were cut to make it seem like everyone was talking about being a superhero that's not actually how the movie is okay. that was a trailer deception i will say no one it, it, it is more like a fucking like bleak family drama of them arguing about how to parent this child is like this what sounds the movie like is. jurassic world to me yeah, it, it, is, <laughs> it is like they 
are on the run because they were part of this experiment. And but what's funny is that she gets bullied at one point, and the kids are saying like she's Amish, and I was like, wait, wait. I was like, is this movie they're an Amish family? Because if so, that'd be a great wrinkle to this, like because they'd be like spooked about it being some religious fuck up, right? Like, yeah. and I was like, ooh, if they made it Amish fire starter, I would be into it, right? If they, and especially if they just called it Amish fire. Yes, starter. Okay. I am but, down. It's not that, but that, and so I got very excited because I was like, oh my god, Amish fire starter. That's a great idea. Yeah, like especially copyright twenty twenty two Saturday Amish night for show. Starter, we'll copyright yeah. it for twenty twenty three just in case. Yeah. we're about to roll but over. It make, <laughs> but it makes sense if you think about the fact they don't have electricity, so they live by firelight. So like Amish See, fire starter makes this friends. is a more makes, interesting yes. idea. So sense. I'm going Amish fire starter in my mind, right? And right. I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna be great. And yeah. the, no, that was just the kid bullying her because she doesn't have internet. The closest we got was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm she doesn't have woods. internet because because the family is running from the experiment facility and they can't have Wi-Fi because they'll be tracked. Yep. But they have a house, they have cars, they have jobs. They're a lot living of other a life. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, but internet's a no-go. Right. And so, Makes sense. They live in was, a nice house in the woods, I'm Yeah, guessing. they have a, live a gigantic house yeah. in the woods, of course. Yeah. But These people would have to steal cars, yes. hide in... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how the first one plays. The first Which, one's not a Amish, good movie, Which, if they're Amish, it makes though. more sense. Right. If, if they're it, Amish, it works. They live off the grid, you know? Like, if they're Amish, mm-hmm. this they is all built get, in. I mean, because the first movie, like the, the like, the second half was them being... They got captured. Yeah. And then uh, the agents are trying to, like win her over, yeah. turn her against dad so they can somehow control um, the fires. Started. not really how this one goes. <clears throat> how um, is, is she just able... Uh, sorry, I'm yeah. interrupting, but uh, I haven't seen either. Yeah. How does she start the fires? I know she does it with her mind, but, but do they just pop up yes. there? Yes, yeah, they okay. literally pop, pop up. up. Yeah. In the That's first one, it was Drew Barrymore, and like yes. she got that lit from behind, and her hair started blowing. That's how you knew that. Uh, okay, and then... Yep. Yeah. Um, this movie has some lines that are just like truly cringeworthy. I mean, the Amish joke one was really bad, but there's another part where one of the doctors is talking about the girl. Because like, so Zac Efron and his wife had this girl, so like they both had the telekinetic power, so clearly she's going to have a power, right? And that one of the doctors from this facility is talking about the little girl and they go, she's been brain fucked since birth. And like, wow. that's how it's delivered. Wow. And I was okay. like, what yeah, the right. fuck? Yeah. And then that's, yeah, there's that's, okay. not, that's that's horrible. No. Right? That laziness. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Oh, right. Jesus. And then laziness. There, okay. There's a part where that's, she's like cruising around, testing out her fire starter powers. <laughs> and she comes across a cat in an alleyway. And this was the most vicious cat death I've seen in the movies. Oh this my year. god! She fr- so that she goes to pet the cat and it scratches her and she fries the cat but doesn't kill it so it's still alive and writhing in pain. <gasps> and her dad comes around the corner and he was like, "It's suffering. You need to put it out of its misery." And they just keep cutting to this cat writhing in pain from being half burnt. And then she has to like fully fry it and kill it. <gasps> and I'm like, Jesus Christ! This is excessive as fuck. Mm. Like for this movie, this movie doesn't. So earn many these animals moments. have to yeah. suffer in horror movies. It was. I'm glad that uh, it wasn't me this time. Uh, it, it, and then okay, and then they go have a little funeral for the cat because she feels guilty about this, and they're burying it. And Zac I'm Efron, feeling pet cemetery yes. rage. Okay, to and this then Zac movie. Efron has this really cringy line where he goes, he goes, "I bet the cat, I bet he will be happier in heaven, or she, or they." Oh Jesus! And I was like, "Oh, buddy, you said no to Barbarian, but you said yes to this." Like, oh, so yeah, fi- hard sounds, pass on Firestarter. It sounds real like bad. the worst. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's also like a Native American character called Raindance, and they are like a hired bounty to hunt down the girl. Yeah. And it seems like a problematic usage. Of that was Native George C. People. Scott in the original. Yeah, movie. It's, yeah. A na- it's a Native person in this one named Is Raindance. George C. Scott so, native in, the, yeah. in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's the yeah he's an Indian in yeah. that one. And he's yeah. the one who like so, cozies up to her and like tries to get her to. Yep. Wow. Yep. So lots of reasons to not watch wow. this movie. So that's a hard pass mm-hmm. on Firestarter. Well, the soundtrack okay. was awesome though. Great job, John Carpenter. You put your heart into it. And no one else did. So wow. I got, hope you got that paycheck. So. Let's Colin. quote that. You put your heart into this one. No one else did. Yep. John mm-hmm. Carpenter. <laughs> well, I've seen some bad movies this year, but there's only one that I've hated, hated, hated the fucking movie, and that was Halloween Ends. <laughs> <laughs> and the oh irony is God, that I didn't is expect to hate the movie. I disliked I, this intensely. Is, okay. You went in with I an was, open heart. I was no. surprised no. at how much you hated yes, the movie. So was considering I. where we came from. I know. That's why it's on this list. That's because crazy. It surprised me 
Did you like? Did you hate it more than Halloween Kills? Yes. Wow, this is gonna be great. Because Halloween Kills, so Halloween, right? Ever since they got started on this new franchise, it's like I haven't liked it. The first one I didn't like, but it's like okay. No, actually, I did. I dis. I disliked the first one. The second one. I really disliked and I'm like, okay, I get where these people are going. It's like, they have no kind of concept of, because again, I think, you know, we've said, we take away Michael Myers, uh, reason for doing anything, which I think is simple. And I'm going to say it again. It is, uh, all he wants to do is kill his sister and repeat. over and over and over yep, and over again. And repeat, kill his sister. So then comes Halloween ends and I'm sitting there going like, well, it's going to be as shitty as the last one. You know, and like, uh, cause Sean like really hated the last one. I'm like, I, no, I, don't. I, I will uh, stand here and, and continue to say I do hate Halloween, Halloween kills. kills. Halloween I do. Kills I mean, I asked him absolutely horrible. But I, got, I guess I thought that your hatred was, um, you know, like uh, explosive, like nuclear on that movie, uh-huh. where I'm like. Okay, it sucks, but I don't know if we need to go nuclear on it. So oh. I was going into this one going like, well, it's going to suck as bad as the last one. So now you went nuclear. And I went nuclear, but okay. that took me by surprise. And I was like, <laughs> why? I was surprised too. That I hated it so much. Yes. And I hated it because it is kind of like, it's like, the, I, I think I, I told you guys this. It's like you love something or someone so much and they are being brutalized behind a sheet of glass or you know a wall that you cannot interfere with it's just like yeah you can't do anything as their corpse is being defiled <laughs> i love like, this analogy you're yeah, going with here love it i guess that's I feel the, the thing. passion that's all remember forks it's a corpse. It's a corpse. <laughs> Which is a great that way is to explain being, the Halloween yes. series at this point. It's dead on yes. arrival, yeah. It's a corpse. Yeah. Yep. How much strong feelings do you have towards this corpse? Because it is a corpse. Just I bury guess, it. But, that's yeah. the yes. thing. I guess that, we'll stop that's defiling what I, and just, just bury, bury it. For it. The rest. Because we did Halloween and Halloween Kills. We did episodes on these so you can hear it. And we got a lot of vitriol and feedback. Because we hated Halloween Kills so much, because it much. was like a hate pile on. It was. Yet you we guys want it. another one, huh? You want to hear the hate and pile you on hear us the do third it again. time? Huh? It was entertaining, ah, ah. so they want to hear it us was, do it again. I think so. We'll ha- but there will be a wrinkle in it. That's right. Because and you are the wrinkle. I'm the, the wrinkle. Sean and, wrinkle. And and when we watch it again, I will be watching it for the second time. Yes. You know, so maybe which I will has see been something. My thing, which has been my thing this whole time. Uh, I've wanted the freak show to watch this movie again. I've watched it three times. The listeners do too. So yes. I guess we're so watching I, it again. I, I, I always think because my feeling is there's a shock to watching a movie for the first time. And I think you can more, uh, That's figure true. out your feelings towards a movie, especially a movie like this. Yes. If you watch it, because again. I have, uh, the folks over at red letter media, oh. um, which I to us personally, I hope because no, 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 they, they did like a review of it, but they do take a kind of like, it's a funny thing. And then there's like a scholarly breakdown of like how it's actually a well-directed, well put together (laughs) movie. And I'm listening to these points and I'm like, okay, but the thing that everybody who likes this movie has is that they are tired of Halloween movies where I'm not like, okay, I'm going to take that back. I like, having Michael Myers as the killer in a movie that's okay. called Halloween. There you go. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what I also enjoy. Now, yes. we can't do this here I was like, right now. I know. We, I was like, we have now, to cut yeah. this short, yeah. Yeah. but I'm so looking forward to this breakdown. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll be very interesting later on. <laughs> yeah. So so I know you're exploding, but yeah. Yeah, hold it. I know because well, I just inside. I want to get my rage out at this point because it's yes. been bottled up for because I guess we didn't actually go and do an episode. You know, maybe when we, we probably need to should've. do the episode as a release. This you know? is what I'm yeah. saying. I think we need yeah. to get it out. Yeah. yeah. So we're Tell gonna get we're gonna hash it out. But as of today, <laughs> uh, this was, you know, I mean, I I think. So maybe it's not the the most uh, uh, awful put together movie of the year, or it's how you, know, you feel about but it. But no, but it's more. I think it is a bad movie, and we're gonna. I'm gonna back that up. Uh, you know, on, on a future episode, I assume. Again, I'm gonna go in with as much of an open mind as I can, as I'm forced to fucking watch it again. <laughs> uh, but I hated. I, I, I love you, listeners. Hated Halloween. Uh, ends, mm-hmm. and you're gonna hear why. I guess on a later episode, but <laughs> yes, I will. guess. Um, 
you know, I was actually looking through my letterbox and I'm like, what, what, what else did I see that I, I didn't like? And it was a movie called the cursed. Um, I remember that came and went. It came uh, and went. It was originally titled eight pieces for silver. It's it's a non-committal werewolf werewolf movie. Like they do in those young adult novels where it's not really vampires. They steal your life force or whatever. Ah, It's kind of like that. But the Mm -hmm. cursed is a bad movie. But Halloween ends was the most disappointing, most egregious attack on my sensibilities for the year. What did you want in the 13th Halloween movie? We'll get into it on our episode. I have so many questions. Okay. (laughs) Holly, what was the worst movie that you saw this year? (laughs) Uh, I hated two movies this year, um, but one of them will have to wait until Listener Choice Month. Yeah. Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> Halloween ends. It shows it's going to be a good episode. <laughs> yeah. The other movie I hated was a movie that Colin and I saw together. And as soon as the movie was over, I looked at Colin and I said, well, that sucked. And it's time for us to talk about Scream. Oh, oh yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, this is probably going to be unpopular, but also did not care for that movie. Yeah, this is going to be a group therapy sesh, right? All right, you go for it. Um, Because I know this isn't just me, and frankly, I probably blocked out a lot of this movie because I hated it. Mm -hmm. Hated it. How many Scream episodes have we done on this show? Two. Two. Two? Two? Just four and... and Two. Two Two and We did two and four. Two and four. We've done two episodes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, which I'm still surprised that we did two over three. Oh, yeah. two, no, because two's my favorite. I, right, that's why I'm surprised we did it. Oh, yeah, because no, three I, is the more freak show. Right, I, yeah. I, 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 I watched, I recently watched part three, in, like two days ago. Uh, I'm understanding more and more, and I would not bring that upon you guys, because I understand why it would not be, A, a good episode, and the things, the problems you would bring forward to it, I can't defend. As much, <laughs> there it is. That's why. Now, you can't that's defend what it is. As much as I like the movie, I understand its very big problems. So, I, and I can't be like, well, you're wrong, because I can't say that about that movie. Yeah. I understand them. I accept them. I still like the movie, but that's why Scream 3 so, will never right. come to we're, we're, we're also saying okay. that, that Scream, the series, is kind of second now, I think, to Halloween in the horror slasher like it's supplanted yeah. Friday oh. the 13th. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's Halloween and then Scream, yeah. I which so. I guess has like a linkage to yeah. Halloween. Yeah, through, oh, definitely. For, yeah. Yeah, Throughout absolutely. the years, yeah. It is okay. weaved in and out. But yes, I would say so. So they, those like, are my yeah. over two, Halloween and Scream. And they even kind of kept that one. Well, actually, Scream 4, uh, we, I think we said we, we liked. I liked it. Sean did I was all like thumbs it. down on Scream 4. Your no. thumbs down on Scream 4? I think I passed on, on it, but I've four. since realized I should probably rewatch yeah, it. Yeah, Scream, okay, I, I think I like Scream 4. I like Scream 4. There now is, it's like it's, there's no fucking reason to make another one, but they did, and it was called Scream, even though it's the fifth <gasps> one. Yep, yep, and the next one's going to be called Scream 6, but this one's just Scream, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Scream VI, get it right. Yep. This movie sucked. Yeah. Why? All right. <laughs> Holly, why? All right. Okay, I'll, your... I will say. Let's, I will let's say. go and, back. And so we, let's... We, had a, we had a pedigree here of Radio Silence who had done Radio yes. Not, which we liked. Which mm-hmm. we did like, yes. yes. So going back before this Scream comes out, mm-hmm. what were your feelings towards Scream as a whole? Love before, it. Okay, like Love one, two, three, four. Like we're, we're good. You're feeling good with the franchise? Yeah. Before they announce a new one's coming out. I don't yes. need another one. I'm good. Yeah, I love well, Scream. Yeah, I, I like love Scream 4, especially. So what are your so thoughts on, like, oh, a new Scream is coming out from the producers and directors of a movie we have like? What the fuck story could I, they possibly tell? I wasn't excited thought. about it. Okay. Yeah. I was I was going into it with very low expectations. Yeah. And thinking, the interest just kind I was, of like, Well, eh. obviously I saw it. You like, know? Right, like right. it's, it's a movie you'd be like, oh, well, I'll see it because obviously it's Scream. Yeah, very low expectations, but it was like in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, maybe they'll surprise me. You never mm-hmm. know. Always a possibility. Okay. They surprised me by making the worst Scream movie. Okay. Yeah. That's... So why is it the worst? I will, I will now, say. All right. Now, okay. are you saying the worst Ghost, Scream movie? Because we have Ghost to Billy be... Loomis. That's why. Yeah. Like, that's what I remember about Ghost it. Billy yeah. Loomis. All right. We have to figure out. <laughs> I want, I want that, to be very concise problem. with how okay, you so, feel this is. So we talked about, obviously, we're, we've been talking about legacy a lot, right? Yes. Yeah. So we it have was the, the big theme characters. of the last like two years. We have the legacy characters in this. I will say 
David Arquette kills it in this movie. Yes, yeah, he's the best. Wonderful. Yes. He's the best. He does a wonderful job. I think his character's well written. I think his story arc is very good. You feel for him. I feel at for every him. Moment. I think he's acting his heart out. I think David Arquette. Nailed he knew it. David, he had a moment. Yeah. Right, and but, David Arquette likes to play this character. But yeah. no, loves doing. Now knowing what we know about how this next one's going and who's not coming back for it. Maybe a big mistake to take him out in this movie. Probably. You know, it kind of feels like a Star Wars Last Jedi situation yeah. where it's like, why'd you get rid of Luke when well, you had to write Leia out? It kind of thing, feels like that. But that uh, story divide and spoilers, I guess, for Scream. I think, mm-hmm. I think, to be honest to ourselves, I think spoilers from here on out for Scream of this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Say whatever you guys want. The, yep. the fact that they, they killed his character was like... And a front. I'm like, you, mm-hmm. you killed the most likable character in this well, whole yeah. fucking series. Yeah. Yes. Like, and go now, fuck yourself. And now knowing that Nev Campbell isn't going to be in this next one, it's like, so well, what Jesus, do you have? I mean, she okay. was barely in the last she was one. Like, in, in Scream, it. Right, the but remake. She, but she made a big thing out of, like, I wanted to be in this, but it was a contract and a pay issue. Like, this was a whole back and forth for a yes. number of months mm-hmm. on the internet. Like, it wasn't it wasn't a narrative choice to leave her out of this movie. It was a money uh, issue. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's why I'm like, you're losing, you're, they're dropping like flies here. You got to do something. Right. Stop, the, stop the bleeding. I want to go back to Dewey because in a, and now obviously I don't want any of these characters to die, but in a world that we live in where the scream the scream franchise is going to continue, and you let's just say we have to accept that and move on. Do don't you think that Dewey would have had to have died? Somebody would have had to have died to I mean to keep this franchise going for a movie to have stakes. stakes. Yeah. yeah, somebody's got to die. You got to kill off the you people that you like. So it's like, oh my god, what I are would, they gonna do next? I would but, rather not. Nobody's safe. But that's all. That's also why the cold open is immediately a problem. You don't kill off that girl. Yeah. Then well, where are your stakes but, in this movie? Well, but that's the twist on the movie, especially when you're coming in as new Just kill Gail. But when you twist it. <laughs> Damn. But when you t- twist yeah, the movie. They should have killed Gail in four. They should have yeah. killed Gail in four. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The whole problem now. Uh, but when the, the twist it makes the movie more safe, it's not really a twist. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like. I think our. And I'm, maybe I'm getting ahead of something here, but I think the whole problem with the entire franchise at this point is Scream 4. Because Scream 4 takes up so much territory of what Scream 5 is. Oh, also, yeah. I, and yeah. that's the Scream meta movie, yeah. Right, but Scream 3 does that too. Yeah, that's not the fault of Scream 4. Yeah, that's Scream 5's problem. Then They can't write a movie independent yeah. of the previous I, well, I mean, Scream 4 was ahead that. of its fucking yeah, time exactly. and foresaw. It, okay, yeah. let's, but don't give it to the whole movie. You can give it to certain parts of it, but that movie is still not great. It's no, my second I mean, favorite Scream movie. Scream. Yeah. Right. No, like, as far, <laughs> but, like certain themes of it, I agree. Yeah. Like looking back at it now, mm-hmm. yes, the, the whole like I don't need friends, I need fans. Yeah, yeah. That makes yes, it does make sense for that. But a lot of, uh, I don't want that because it nailed that pretty well. I'll say in the fourth. I don't one. want that to overshadow all the other faults of that movie. And you're saying they're doing that again in Scream Five. I'm saying, well, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm following what your no, I'm not point following. is here. Yeah. Continue on. <laughs> I'm saying uh, but, problems with Scream 5, well, no. The problems with, to me, the problems with Scream 5 are independent to Scream 5. Like, I don't see how they connect to Scream oh, 4 at all. Let's, like, yeah, okay. let's just talk about I think like, Scream yeah, 4 takes up a lot of territory that Scream 5 is also trying to cover. But that's I, Scream 5's problem, not Scream 4's, because it came after it. So it's its job to be independent of the movie that came before it. Like There, there, it, are, it's, there are simple things in this movie that bug the hell out of me. Yeah. For Such example, as. there are two killers. One is a million feet tall and one is two feet tall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a big problem. That drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. That drives me absolutely fucking mm-hmm. crazy. Because they're supposed to be the same. Yeah, yeah. You can't tell which one yeah. is which when they you're put so, the costume suppo- on. Yeah, but, it's supposed yeah. to be, you can't tell that there's two killers, okay. but there, you should yes. be able to tell there's two killers because there's a major height difference yeah. and body type but difference. is that something five movies into a scream that you have to accept? I will not accept it. Okay. But, <laughs> okay. I personally think that's something you just have to accept. Refuse. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> you can do that. There's yeah. a part in the third act of this movie where is it very unclear who we're supposed to be rooting for. Um, because we have the daughter of the killer from the original movie that kicked off this entire franchise. We're supposed to be rooting for to kill someone else. Right. I remember that. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Where, where are my allegiances as the audience and who am I supposed to be rooting for? Who is the villain of this that movie? That was a right? really weird It's very strange. Yeah. It's, area it, that it went into. It's extremely <laughs> odd. And I don't Billy understand. Billy Loomis wants first... his daughter to kill someone that's trying to fulfill his legacy? As I was walking out of the theater... I know I was speaking out loud as I do. 
about the movie. And I, my one of the biggest things I thought of was like, why are they trying to make Billy Loomis a sympathetic character? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. And it's a major two, problem. The two 16 year olds in front of me turn around and is like, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Why would they do that? <laughs> yeah. And that was a huge problem that came out of this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why is Billy Loomis a good guy in this movie? Mm-hmm. Right. Because despite what you wanted for this, that's how he's coming across. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like a motivational right. character yep. for, for our daughter. heroine. Yeah. Right. Yep. Ugh. Yeah. He's her, he's her like master Yoda. Yeah. Miscalculation. And it's like I, I'm I'm sure the writers are saying, oh well, oh he's you know he's he's a vision. She's ha- she's having psychosis issues, and she, you know, that's what she's seeing. That's uh, what she's projecting. It's like I don't give a shit. It's Billy Loomis. We have an opinion about him. Yeah. You can't bring back like fake Billy Loomis and have him be a hero. Right. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah. It's yeah. not how this works. I don't buy into that. Yeah. I don't care if she's having Especially some like, sort of episode. This is not like a, a universe that deals in the supernatural. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, right. and, and this I is the closest. This is, they're this getting, getting close, close to, it. to it. Yeah, they're towing the line here. Yeah, exactly. Be. Yes. Yeah. It's a I'm problem. Not, it, I'm not saying it would have been better, but if he had been like kind of like antagonizing her, yeah. maybe it would have made more yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, there was like a, pushing was, her towards right, that limit. Right. There's a way to have yeah. that character in there, but not their purpose yeah. was or the direction for it she, was not and, didn't feel right for that character by the end of the movie she is like proud to be the daughter of a serial killer yeah. right yeah. why again right. my biggest fucking problem like it was a superhero move she don't says fuck don't with fuck with the daughter, daughter of a serial killer, killer yeah. which yeah. makes no, no fucking sense why is that the line because why because they want yeah. her to embrace her because her whole thing in this movie was about not wanting to have the identity of being the daughter of a serial killer and then at the end she embraces it like it's a good fucking that's thing. That's not like something to embrace. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's like they were acting like she was Firestarter. You know, yeah. they were like, like, no, she's trying to power, she honey. Said it, yeah. like, Oh, I'm the daughter of a serial killer. Yeah. Do they hear how insane <laughs> no. that sounds? Yeah. And I'm like, no, no dude, take do. your meds, go to therapy. What are you talking the about? The daughter of a serial this killer. Is insane. Fuck you. Yeah. That's craziness yeah. considering the fucking it's scream. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the first movie yeah. and then say that in the yeah. fifth movie. Are you? That's Me- crazy. Meanwhile, if you go back to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, when uh, when, when Scout Taylor Compton finds out she's Michael Myers' sister, she has a mental breakdown. Mental breakdown. Which is how which that makes more sense. Happen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that makes way yeah. more sense. Yeah. And this was this was like one of my first introductions to Jack Quaid. Yeah, um, yes, mine too. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, he <laughs> redeemed himself, and I watched the boys. Yeah, he's the great. Boys is the great. Boys, yeah. I mean, I like him as I think I like him as an actor, and what I've seen him in, I think mm-hmm. he works for this part. He's too obvious. I feel like in I, this that part. is a yeah. thing. Yeah, but. It's not just him. I think the movie yeah, makes yeah, him. Yeah. It's like, and I was I, listening outside the door. I love you. Yeah. I'm going to follow you wherever you go. <laughs> you know. And the fact that like halfway through the movie, that one little girl from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I was like, oh, what if she gets set on fire in this movie? And I then she that, does? That, like, two, two months before this <laughs> you movie You called came in out. the trailer. Yeah, like, yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if she was the one who was set on fire? Yeah. She fucking is. She yep. is. My problem, another problem I have with this movie there aren't. You ever notice when uh, in certain scenes in this movie this happens when it's a uh, 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 camera is gonna uh, pan from left to right mm-hmm. and they realize that they didn't do it fast enough in real time that they have to speed it up with yeah. them digitally. Oh. Mm-hmm. They do that a few times in this movie and it makes this movie look cheap as fucking mm-hmm. shit. They do it when um, the sheriff is running up to her house and Ghostface comes yes. out. Yeah. There's a, yes, he moves quicker. Then, like he has sped up. Yes, in that moment. it almost looks stuttery because yes. it's so it fast. Looks yeah. Ridiculous. It yeah. yeah, they also do it when Chad is wandering through the bushes out in front yep. of the house. When it does the turn to him and he gets stabbed, they speed it up again there too. Yep. yep. That. But do it again. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it's the thing. They didn't have the, the money at the time to do it again. So, I got yeah. the impression watching this movie, and I think this is the trap that a lot of up and coming younger filmmakers fall into is that you know you're you're offered this thing you know like imagine it's like you go into this office and they're like so we want to talk about you know we were thinking maybe you'd be good for the next scream movie yeah. and, and if you're you, like and listen to the commentary on the movie because they talk about that is almost the most consistent thing they talk about on the commentary but continue but yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's, it's more about getting, your it's more about getting the job yeah. than completing it yes yeah. because it's it's almost like well you know the job's been offered to you and so you have to 
you have to produce something, right? Yeah. That, that would be, you know, in keeping with this thing, but it really doesn't matter. It's just like, you got to get the job. You got to be the person to do scream. Cause if it's not you, somebody else is going to do it. So that's a trap, right? Because you should walk away, <laughs> you know, but you're <laughs> right. like, cause I really don't have like, what you would you do? Right. Well, let's sit down and figure it out. It's like, well, if I don't do it, somebody else. Yeah. Will. Well, that doesn't mean you're right for it. <laughs> To do but it. Yeah, the thing yeah. that I keep getting from these is like you've got a bunch of younger filmmakers who just wish that they had made the first one. Yeah. And now they're being given a chance to do a scream movie or a yeah. Halloween movie or whatever the fuck it is. You know, that's not a legitimate reason to that this is like the corporate fucking sausage factory, you know, thing. <laughs> where you you know, like I know that the the fucking uh, uh the earlier Halloween Hellraiser movie, you know, like all those things went through these processes where it was yeah. like, well, we got to keep the rights. So, we'll give it to somebody and they'll make it, but it was less pr- uh, high profile, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? So it seemed like there's less to lose. But now it's like if I was Radio Silence, I wouldn't fucking do this because it's poison to your goddamn career, I think. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You're not going to be better than Wes Craven's Scream. No. No. So don't try. Yeah. (laughs) It's a trap. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be better than Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. It, yeah, so stop, fucking stop trying and yeah. just do other yeah. different dinosaur movies, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, you know, the motivation for the killers in this movie is very flimsy. Very. Yeah. It feels extremely. very flimsy. The relationship between the killers is also very flimsy. Mm-hmm. How Reddit. They, how, That's the relationship. Right. How, well, yeah. Hey, yeah. babe. They throw in a babe and a hun here yeah. and they're just like, oh, they've been together forever. The, that is The end the, of this movie... When they started walking up to the house, and I was like, "Is that fucking Stu's house? Are you kidding me?" Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I was done. It's too Legacy too many layers of meta. Done. I mean, but but Holly, they mention it within the context of the movie, so they get away with it. <laughs> They're like, "Oh my god, the yeah. same house." Even that's a little derivative. Yep. As long as your character says, as long as your character says, it, and then you're yeah. excused. Yeah. We mentioned it, so you can't fault mm-hmm. us. For I, it, right? I, no, I this don't is agree what they live on. It's <laughs> even <laughs> more, it's even more insulting when they do that. It. I I agree. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, and I it's don't. Like you know, it's bad, so you're commenting on it. Like that's more insulting. Right. They know it could. Like it's we shield. might not be able to get away with this, so let's mention it. Yep. Yeah. Just we'll so make we can hedge our right. Obvious it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Hall- Halloween ends does a very similar yep. tactic. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll yep. talk about uh, it. But yeah, and then just we're a little. Uh, I mean, we're getting a little ham fisted with the whole passing of the torch thing. How's that torch? Um. Everyone. I wonder how many uh, left side stomach wounds all the people within this franchise have. Yeah, count them up. Because Gail's <laughs> been shot there twice. Sydney's been stabbed there multiple times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, my, I think my review on Letterboxd was that most of the main characters of this uh, series must have horrible digestive issues. <laughs> yeah. They have to. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. many times that they've been stabbed or shot yeah, there. Right. Pieces uh, none of them sh- have, should be able to shit right, right. forever mm-hmm. the rest of their lives. Uh, one of my favorite things about this movie is that there was that scene in the trailer where she's like, of course I carry a gun. I'm Sydney Prescott. Sydney, yeah. And yeah. then you see the movie and it's I'm Sydney fucking Prescott, but yeah. they cut around it really awkwardly in the trailer. <laughs> I love like, noticing like stuff like that. Like her role in this movie. Like non-existent? See, it's non-existent. <laughs> She's yeah. sleepwalking she, through she it. Did she did nothing. Yeah, it's Mm-mm. terrible. She did not want to be there. It feels like mm-hmm. it. It's barely bad. I mean, like you said, I think... Uh, you know, Dewey is, uh, he's David Arquette's doing his, his damnedest because he knows he's got something. Yep. And Courtney Cox is like in it. Yeah. But their only Nev Campbell good came is... off the worst. Yeah, it was she like, really did. There's no part here for you to play. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's part of it. But I think the other part is she really didn't put any effort into mm-hmm. it. And it's like, no, that's... The, but no, but I, uh, well, I won't say that exactly because. Um, the beginning conversation when Dewey does eventually call her again, I think Dewey's doing most of the heavy lifting on this, but the conversation that they have at the beginning of the over phone call is actually quite good for their characters. And I would recommend it's a good scene. It's a good 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 scene because they, because they know because the way Sydney says goodbye to Dewey in this opening piece, Mm -hmm. which is very, it feels very heartfelt. She's like, I'm so glad they have you there to protect them. But be careful because I know you're Dewey and you're going to get fucked up at some point in this movie. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, that leads to her coming back and everything. But she does do well in that regard. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. The rest of it, I don't know. I mean, I think they need her to hand off figuratively the series to the new people. I think I'm glad she's uh, I'm sorry that she had to go through what she did 
for the next movie, Scream 6 and everything, but I'm glad she's not coming back. I don't want them to do anything to her that will sully the mm -hmm. history of her character any more than it has. Like we were I was we were good with Sid after three. Like despite yeah. what you may think, like she had a good ending and we were done and she was fine. I'd like to leave her alone. Yeah, let her be happy. Yeah, let her be happy. We it. sometimes these characters deserve to be happy. But I just don't know what a scream movie looks like that's not centered around her because that's what they all are. Yep. Right. So that's Which, I don't I don't she know. She needs to get married and have a kid her. and the kid gets haunted by yeah. the, well, I don't I mean, even she fucking is. She's married the, to Kincaid. Like, they have it, two daughters. It doesn't but that's the thing, I guess, you know, when you know if the comparison is like Halloween where there is a kind of a supernatural evil, you know, it's like, I guess you can kind of spin that off into cheap sequels where, you know, the evil is still after the family. There's right. a family line, but you right. really can't line. do that in this where it's mm -hmm. like, no, no, she was the victim of two fucking psycho, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, it was killers. personal to her. It was personal yes. to her. Like that's you, the problem. That's why you can't yeah. make a franchise out of this. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, and it's amazing that they got away with as many as they did. But it's like, fucking like, put this one in it's the amazing goddamn. They ground. got away with two. Yeah, I'm going to go back to this because <laughs> two is a goddamn miracle. Mm -hmm. Considering all the elements mm -hmm. that came together, mm -hmm. it's a fucking miracle. Two's and thank really God good. for it. God bless Scream Two. I love yep. Two. Yeah. Two's uh, again my favorite horror movie. It's and the fact that they had to crank that one out like so quickly. A year. Oh my God. It like. Like I said, it's a fucking miracle. Yeah. <sighs> I love Scream, but you can put it to bed. Yep. I I yeah. I well, I again, I, I agree as well. I wonder yeah. what the average person who doesn't pay attention to this as much as we do thinks about these things. A lot of people liked Scream. This most recent they, one. A I lot mean, of they did. Liked it. They did. But how bad do you have to offend people until they actually start stop going to the movie? I think. I think this is it. Is I it think... just because you go because you you know it's Friday night and you want to go out and do something or whatever? Now I guess you you know like what's on? What's new this week? Oh, there's a screen movie. I like the. I remember that. I liked it. I Watch think this we one. Might oh, get that one's kind of sucked. Downturn. Then, in there's the a new one. one. Are, you, are you still gonna watch that? See, I don't know. I guess I'm on the other side of this. I'm at the point now where, like, so fucking jaded that I am, like, giving up all this shit. Like, I do not need to see a new Scream movie. I don't either. I don't, I don't yeah. need to see a new I, Halloween I will, movie. Like, fuck them all. As yeah. much as, <laughs> you like, killed them yeah. all for me. That's where I'm I'm, at. A, I'm a big <laughs> Scream fan, so I will try to, if they make another one, I will try to find something to like about it. Because there's certain elements of this one that I do like a lot. Um, but... And again, they'll make another one because six is coming out and I'll go see it and I will try to make something out of it if it's not good that I do like. But see, like, and then I'm, you're already bargaining yeah, for the movie before but, but, it's no, even come but out. Like, but then I'm, but on I'm, the also opposite, like, I'm on the opposite coin because I love Scream too. Scream is my favorite horror movie, but I'm done. Like yeah. it, it, they're ruining it. I'm, the, the I know they're, they're, it's like yeah. you're kind of like sucking the like because I mean the, it, the, the I mean we've all been of it. I, yeah I mean the big one for me was probably like Star Wars right mm -hmm. like I loved that thing as a kid and into my 20s and then into my 30s and then they fucking kept on leeching parts of it away and, I, and basically started draining it and now I mean I guess I could go back and watch those original movies but I've seen them so many times that the only thing that gives you a thrill is seeing something new but I know I know that anything I watch that's new is going to suck. This is what I feel about every goddamn thing that comes out. Yeah. Hall we got a new Halloween movie. They're going to yep. make a new Friday the 13th movie at some point, right? Yep. They got yeah. the rights cleared up. It's going to suck. Mm -hmm. They're all just going to suck and I'd be better off just living with the memory and moving on to I something would, I else. Mean, I yep. agree. I would love to as well. Uh, is the sickness... <laughs> Still going to see them, <laughs> even though you know this. Yes, yes that, yeah, is, that is the sickness. Yes. Yeah. At some uh, point, you gotta, you gotta. Because like, I feel right. like, I mean, because it is liberating. Once yeah. you get to this point, yeah. you're like, <sighs> Callan's like, come to the other yeah. side, John. Yeah, come to the other side. Sure, we don't no. have to watch these fucking. And, and exactly, it's yes. just gonna no. piss you off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, and I agree. And we'll discuss more of that when we yep. get to the Halloween ends. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But, because <laughs> I don't want to get to a point when something I hate it so much that it makes me hate the thing I used to love. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You know, I agree with that. I agree that's, with what I you said. What that's, like that's, the that's, longer they yeah. go, the more yep. you, it, the it, the more opportunity to hate list. the yeah. whole thing yeah. Yeah, exactly. happens. A very, I agree. A, a perfect example, it's not, you know, freak show material at all, but 
um, Sex in the City. Mm-hmm. That used to yeah. be one of my and favorite like TV that, shows. Right? Yeah. And, and in just, I watched a few episodes of In Just Like That, and now I can't even you watch can't, it's it's it. Ruined everything. I can't thing, watch reruns of the I, original. Which yeah. is, I, I agree. It's yeah. what they're going to do yeah. to this I, series. I don't want to I don't want to hate what Scream. I, what I'm trying to do either. with that in my life is I'm trying to remember the experience I had when I first saw these things. Yes. But it is a memory. Like, I don't actually want to go back and watch the thing. <gasps> right. I just want to remember how I felt. I guess that's what, you know, why you watch them over and over again. You're trying to recapture Mm -hmm. that memory that you had when you first, now it's like, nope, I'm not going to rewatch it. I'm just going to remember it on my own and it's going to go however it goes. It's it's funny (laughs) that you mentioned that. The remembering of when you first saw it. 25 years ago today, I saw Scream 2. Really? I, I was looking at the, I still have the movie ticket. From when I went and saw it on December 26th, I went and saw Scream 2. Yep. Wow. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. It's like, it's funny you remember that because I remember that because yeah. it was, and there's a reason it's my, it's my favorite horror movie. The theater experience was so, it was yeah. the Scream 2 opening experience. Yeah. There was an energy I to it. That. There was an excitement to yep. it. Everyone was crazy. Like to, for, it came out in, that was what, 97? 97. Yeah, we'll yeah, say 90, yeah. 97. Was first, yeah. I was 11 years old, 10 mm. at that point, and my parents took the whole family to go see this movie. <laughs> That's how big the event this was. We all went to go see it the day after Christmas. We were fucking jacked. <laughs> God damn it. Yep. Uh, can I bring Stop up some honorable making... mentions of other movies that sucked? Like, yes. honorable, <laughs> yeah. like, worse. Yes. That was um, our thoughts on screen. Uh, yeah. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was fucking terrible. I still want to watch this Oof. movie. <laughs> it was, I want to watch it. I did not want to watch it. I don't it. have a my problem husband, with the cast that you do. No, no, it's not the cast. It's the characters are fucking. Okay, there's not yeah. a likable character in the fucking movie, is the problem. The and it's just horrible people being horrible to each other and it's just obnoxious and loud and ugh, it's just see all right it's just a very off-putting I, I, movie that's what i thought i was gonna be so i'm off-putting. prepared for that going and into it's it, just but it looked interesting it's i'll watch it. i'm it's not for me okay. I, it, I found it very obnoxious and i knew it was gonna be that obnoxious but my husband wanted to watch it and i was like i don't know what he did, thought wait, this movie was gonna be but i was like no this is gonna be like an obnoxious gen z party movie and that's so like, how it's did like, he come out of it i'm curious he was so. like oh it's not what i expected and i'm like well, what did you not watch the trailers exactly what they they promised <laughs> like they, I feel like they delivered on exactly what they said this movie was going to be. It was very obnoxious. Um, I did not get a chance to watch it, but Colin, if you could enlighten us to um, your experience with Blonde, I would like to hear it. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, another movie I'm probably not going to get to just because it's on three reviews. hours long. Again, death to the over to over hour and forty five minute movie. Yeah. yeah, at all. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not against that, but I am against this idea that was advocated by. Um, James Cameron, which is, you know, well, you binge four hours of It's not the same. TV show. I'm tired it isn't of this the argument. Same. Not I don't think it's the you same. You used to say it was the same, Colin. You used to argue you, for that. No, yeah. uh, no, no, no. Colin's a devil's advocate, man. He will bring up, <laughs> well, you binge these for, why don't you? Just, he will he'll yeah. do that just to ask the question. Yeah, yeah. Colin's yeah. a prodder. He right. doesn't necessarily He's believe like, it. All right. It turns out that Colin I, likes I to have poke. a letterbox review. Let me see if I can give you a synopsis. But it's an ugly, gross movie about a beautiful icon of cinema uh, that heaps misery upon its heroine. Jetting from one brutalizing sexual encounter to the next doomed love affair in the life of Marilyn Monroe, omitting everything else. That's yeah. That sounds awful. Is it all black and white? No. Well, is it? There's a no. There's a talking fetus in this movie. Is that correct? Yes. That's. Oh, I've only seen advertisements. There's a talking penis. Fetus. Oh, fetus. fetus. Not better. (laughs) Not better. (laughs) Just different. Not better. Just different. I was like, because I saw that in the Tommy Lee (laughs) and and Pamela Anderson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a talking penis. I don't know (laughs) what the point was of it. You know, it's like, because usually... (laughs) pro-life stands, probably. But um, no, I mean, the whole whole movie, movie, you know, it's like to take, I guess, someone who you have, or, you know, there is a lot of goodwill toward... And just basically go like, no, her real life was like shit. Well, and I'm like, I don't think it was because you're just focusing on right. the but, shitty part. But even if it was, nobody wants to watch of everything that. Else. Like, and yeah, why is why that? Why that's, three hours yeah. of like, shittiness. Wait, I feel like everyone knows like Marilyn Monroe's story, and it was it's, shit. Her yeah, life, her we, life we was know, awful. But right, not well, exclusively if nothing, yeah. shit. Yeah, I guess I that's my point. If nothing else, we know her life was cut short early, which is tragic enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which we we don't need to like delve into three hours underneath that. We know the tragedy. 
tragedy. Maybe we need to just focus on the good stuff. Yeah. It, Can we it, show like, her some goddamn kinda, respect and stop exploiting her for once yeah. in her Seriously. fucking life? The like, atrocity like, exhibition, yeah. I guess, is the yeah. thing. It's She's like been dead almost twice as long as she lived, and yet we're still fucking exploiting yeah. her. It's ridiculous. But it's because I, I didn't gain well, any further. Uh, I guess maybe that's the yeah, thing. What'd it's you like learn? You're gonna do, yeah. Did you learn anything about her character that was like you know? And I'm gonna say no. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it was just watching someone get brutalized that's for awful. two that's and awful. a half hours that's or whatever awful. the fuck it was. I it's like two point five. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to watch that. No, at all. I don't think you should. <laughs> <laughs> Although Anna de Armas is really good. You know. Yeah, she's well, yeah, a good actress. Yeah. The clips that I've seen, I'm like, yeah. she did a great I job. No she did a great job. <laughs> but I'm like, should she have done it? Not, it was high not profile. This movie it, isn't that unfortunate. It happens a lot with biopics where the movie's shit, but the performance is really good. Yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you know, for her career, it's uh, very high profile. She yeah. knew that it was going to be risque enough that people were going to pay attention to it. The yeah. fact that it had an NC-17 rating means that, you know, it was a lightning rod. Right. So from a More career standpoint, and when I'm talking cynical, fucking, you know, hard, <laughs> you know, that's why you do it. Yeah. She also had this the horny snail movie this year too, right? She did. Yeah, I like that movie. The horny I have not seen the horny snail movie yet. Yeah, deep water. Kayla, watch the horny, the horny snail movie. movie. <laughs> it was pretty. It good. was made for you. <laughs> uh-huh. That was Adrian Lyon coming yeah, back yeah, for the yeah, first yeah, time in right, ten that's years. Right. Yeah. All right. At least what we have. The, well, if that's the one positive yeah, that comes out of this, horny the horny snail, snail movie. movie. <laughs> Everyone go watch the horny snail movie. What a year! What a year! Yeah. What a year! Yeah. Well, it's been a year of ups and downs, but now at least we had this therapy session. And we yes, were, we did. It feels like always like the 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 excitement of the show. Well, maybe because it, toward the end we get like re- <laughs> we <laughs> it's coming to head. on that like yes. uh, the movie that we hated. well we found the, the, we movie. found the movies are just like ooh yeah. we have thoughts on these yeah. yeah. We have more thoughts on the movies that we dislike more than the ones that we We do. Because do. Like, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's far more easier to Easier to, to like. access that hate. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, oh, yeah, I like this movie. And this is why I'm this movie. But the yeah. hate is like, I fu- the hate. Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. describe hate my lingers, hatred. Yeah, and it lingers yeah. with you. In uh, much <laughs> detail. Yeah, you yes. work it out. The other ones you're kind of evangelizing for the movie, I suppose. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much again, all of you who have stuck with us this yeah. long. Yes. Uh, that do year after year. We appreciate, and I really mean this, uh, each and every one of you mm-hmm. listening to this show. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. You mean more to us you. than you know. <laughs> yes. We so, love you. What? I said we love you. There you go. We do love you. I want to make sure nobody was talking over that. No. Yeah, yeah we okay. do love you. It's true. Yeah. Go watch Elvis and then see the scene where he goes in the audience is kissing all these women. That's us. That's to us to you. <laughs> so we love you. Yeah. All right. Well, now I, to watch Elvis to, yeah. I, now I have to watch Elvis to know what I'm doing yeah, to my yeah. fans. Yes, okay. yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, so. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again. We'll be back. And Happy New Year. Yes. That's right. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. That's Happy New weekend. Year. Yeah, as you're listening to this, so um, the next uh, episode will be... Oh. Oh, next right. episode, yeah. It's yeah, a what's the next, next episode. Okay, that's right. Yeah. What are we close. getting into? What yeah, is happening next, next month, Colin? Yeah. The next pick right. is yours. That's right. You what is it, Colin? voted on it. So here we go. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna work like from the... the um, number four. And that's yours right. alone. <laughs> number four, and we're going to go upwards to the most voted four. So here we go. We're starting at number four. Uh-huh. It is, we are watching what I think is the most uh, uh, romantic oh. horror movie of all time. And there's David Cronenberg's The Fly. Yes. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Ooh, all, right. all right. So thanks all for right. voting this for is The one Fly. This is an icky movie. Yeah. <laughs> an icky it's movie. It's really icky. Very happy. All right. Really icky. But they are hot. They're a hot couple. Yeah, it works. There you go. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday <laughs> Night Freak Show. The Goldblum sexiness. Like, I think that is the <laughs> Yeah, but him and Gina comes... Davis were dating at the time, so they got the right, real chemistry think, like, going. The Gold, Goldblum is like... Yeah. Filmed and positioned in that fashion to be sexy in this movie. Sean's just yeah. just, just think, okay, this is a weird. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to get into this. Yeah, is Let's... Jeff Goldblum a sexy person? Don't answer that. We're gonna find <laughs> out. Cliffhanger. <laughs> next week. Um, uh... <laughs> on the Saturday Night Freak Show. All right. Well, thank you again. We hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark.